Sports Talk Daily with Andrew Hustler Patterson and Michael Remus. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily, big game day edition, getting ready for the Jets and Columbus Blue Jackets tonight, the return of Pierre-Luc Dubois to CBUS, and lots of football to get to today. Patty Newfeld, all-star Patty Newfeld, one of 15 Blue Bombers named to the West All-Stars today, is going to join us as well. And, of course, tomorrow, you might be planning on maybe rescheduling your work obligations because, of course, it is Turkey Day south of the border, and that means three NFL games. And it's been a while since we had my guy Andy McNamara on, so uh, we'll uh, we'll buckle up and get ready for the energy of Andy Mac coming up a little bit later on on the program. Um, we'll also have some time. I'll tee up some of the curling a little later on. I'll just tell you right on. Of course, you might see, if you haven't seen the uh, shows earlier this week, Live from Saskatoon all week long, checking out the Canadian Olympic curling trials. Been doing a bunch of content with Cool Bet Canada. You can check my social media at Hustlerama or the Cool Bet Canada one. We've got a preview for this afternoon's draw, as well as some content coming up later on tonight for the men's 7 p.m. draw. And last night, I'm sure some of you in the chat saw it. Uh, the craziest game I have ever seen. Anderson, Jones, all Manitoba battle. Kerry Anderson steals two and one, steals two and two, steals two and three, was up six nothing, and then was down nine eight going into the tenth and pulled off a deuce to get the win. Jen Jones uh, has her first loss, but man, the Manitoba teams. We are in a situation right now where we could actually have the three playoff teams being Tracy Fleury, Jennifer Jones, and Kerry Anderson and be guaranteed of a Manitoba team representing Canada at the Winter Olympics in Beijing. Uh, it's been a great week so far. If you haven't checked it out, I certainly would suggest that you do so. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that before we finish up the program. We'll get to our cool bet lines. Big, big day in the National Hockey League with a huge slate after a pretty quiet Tuesday night. And, uh, of course, our focus, though, is going to be on the Jets and Columbus Blue Jackets. And Mike McIntyre has been there for a couple days working on a number of angles. Jack Roslevic playing against his old team, Pierre-Luc Dubois, with his first visit back to Columbus. And, of course, Pascal Vincent, who I know Mike has a piece coming up. So we'll get to all that in a few minutes with Mike McIntyre. As always, want to thank our sponsors for making this happen every day, including Vita Health Fresh Market, Culligan Water, Manitoba Battery, Royal Sports. We'll be talking about jerseys as well, which, of course, are always available at Royal Sports. Not Auto Corp, Little Brown Jug, Princess Auto. Sponsors of all of our curling coverage and curling reports here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Our friends at Boston Pizza, the Nick and Nicky DQ Group, Canadian Club Whiskey, Not Auto Corp, and of course, Cool Bet Canada. Uh, all right, let's get to it and let's welcome in Michael Remus to the program. Remo, what is going on? I'm feeling good. I'm ready. Big, uh, huge slate of games today. I guess, you know, uh, no games on Thanksgiving for the NHL. We do have that Friday afternoon, Black Friday game. I've seen a lot of people uh, in the chat be like, why is there a game on a Jets game on a Friday afternoon? It's Black Friday. It's a holiday in the States. Uh, NHL's in two different countries. So uh, it's a big thing. I, the Jets, the, isn't the Jets wild annual Black Friday game? Isn't it a, sorry, isn't it an annual thing, the Black Friday game? Well, but, it's happened a bunch of times. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's really interesting. And I guess I noticed this more just from being a season ticket holder while well, I'm doing the show too. I mean, you sort of get used to particular spots in the schedule. You know, we had Buffalo coming on a Sunday afternoon in early January most years. And we always remember the the tracksuit game, of course. But yeah, like over the last, I think, three, four seasons, non-COVID, of course, the Jets have played this afternoon game in the Twin Cities on the Friday. And, uh, you know, before COVID happened, it was a great opportunity. There was a ton of Jet fans that would go down for the um, for the event, you know, uh, take in. The game, maybe do a little bit of shopping, get some good deals. We know how Winnipeggers love those. Um, And ideally, see a Vikings game as well. Which actually brings me to a quick point, Remus. I'm not sure if you saw that picture that Lawless posted last night on Twitter. I I did. Here, I'll throw it up right now. So this is a picture of, uh, and God, this is probably 10 years old, um, from one of the H&L bus trips out to Regina. And um, I, I found a few old pictures, fired a few off to Gary, and he threw that one up. And we had some uh, some good chat. A lot of feedback from a lot of people that were on those trips. And it did get me thinking, especially considering I'm here in Saskatoon right now. 
somehow able to pull off this program, knowing that we now have the equipment. We essentially need a wired internet and a plug, and we can do the show from anywhere. The potential of taking Winnipeg Sports Talk on the road went up uh, tenfold, as well as the potential of maybe doing a Winnipeg Sports Talk roadie at some point. And uh, I'm not sure whether we'd do something maybe down to Vegas or somewhere where we'd fly and see the Winnipeg Jets play or potentially a bus trip like the old days, which were a heck of a lot of fun. Feel free to give us your suggestions on those things. But that is a personal goal of mine for 2022 coming out of the pandemic to be able to do some of those great things we did before. And um, man, I mean, still have friends that we met on that trip originally 10 years ago and would love to do something like that again with so many of you that uh, hang out with us every day on on, uh, Winnipeg Sports Talk. Um, Hey, if you're with us on YouTube, thanks so much for being here. Hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed already, kindly hit that red subscribe button. It's big for us. We're approaching 6K. It'll be a big day when we get to that. We'll have to do some special giveaways for our subscribers to commemorate 6,000 people subscribing on YouTube. And if you are listening to the podcast, I know many people say, what can we do to help you guys out? All we need you to do, if you go to Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star rating, and if you could, just do a couple lines saying you love the show or whatever. Stroke us. Give us the old uh, pump pump our tires a little bit on there uh, if you so feel obligated to. Uh, it certainly does help um, grow the podcast numbers as well. Um, so, Reem, yeah, that was fun, you know, getting that picture up from Gary, talking about being on the road. I'm here on the road right now. I had a great time with Coolbet, as I mentioned. Check the socials for uh, the curling content we've done. Um, but really, I mean, a couple big, big stories today when it comes to, um, you know, our local teams, Jets in Columbus. And I can't wait to have Patty Newfeld on. And what a great honor for Patty. Um, you know, I believe this is the first time he's ever been named an All-Star, and he's going with 14 of his teammates, which has to be close to a record. I saw my buddy Matt Baker said that in 2007, the BC Lions had 15 All-Stars. Um, but this is one of the best teams we've seen in the Canadian Football League in a long time. And uh, no one should be surprised that there are so many members of the Blue and Gold who are on that Western All-Star team as announced today. Yeah, it was actually Patty's first time being named an All-Star. And I know that um, I think Darren was really upset that he was snubbed uh, last time, uh, the, you know, last uh, CFL season in 2019. So, I mean, I'll pull up the article. It's on uh, the Bombers website. And we've talked about this, Hess, how often, um, or it's not how often, how many players on the Bombers are the best player in the league are at that position? we got Caleros, Lawler, Dembski. But, I mean, uh, Stanley Bryant, two-time outstanding lineman. I mean, Hardrex, second-time All-Star, Newfeld. Uh, Big Hill was the outstanding defensive player. Jeff Coat, Jefferson, Alexander. I mean, how many guys? DeAndre Alford and Dietrich Nichols, uh, the rookies. That uh, to me, I mean, you know, yeah. we kind of touched on that with Big Hill yesterday on the program. I mean, going into camp, I mean, the Bombers brought 30 DBs in. Um, <laughs> you know, there was there was a lot of uncertainty as to who would be covering the top receivers on the other teams, and Alford and Nichols. Um, have both been phenomenal. And then you add in Winston Rose coming back from the National Football League, he being such a big part of the 2019 championship team. So, you know, it, it really speaks to just how great the Bombers were from start to finish of this season. Um, and, you know, you mentioned it, uh, you know, Aiden Dar- Alden Darby also getting on there as the uh, cover linebacker. Um, you know, we thought that would be, that was a guy that I wasn't sure might make it, but certainly deserving of it. And, a guy that pretty much as long as he plays, I think is going to get the nomination for special teams is uh, Mike Miller, of course. Yeah, the GOAT, on. as we remembered after he broke the all-time record and his entire teammates and coaching staff wearing those blue and gold GOAT shirts celebrating Mike Miller. Yeah, of course. Yeah, led the CFL in special teams tackles for the third straight season, fourth time in his career. Um, pretty uh, pretty incredible there for Mike Miller. And they did have that, yeah, that those GOAT uh, t-shirts, I think, at the practice after he set the record. Uh, pretty awesome. No doubt about it. So uh, we're going to talk about that with Patty Newfeld. Of course, the Bombers chilling right now, enjoying a bye week, a very well-earned bye week, while the Riders and the Stampeders get ready for this weekend's Western semifinal. I'm hoping to have DT, Derek Taylor, on the program. He's on tomorrow. Marshall- oh, okay, DT, in for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then don't forget one thing I mentioned, I wanted to mention right off the top of the program, if you're with us today or listening to the podcast, Friday show, because Mike was Michael was mentioning that weird start time for the Winnipeg Jets, normally we'd be on the air at that time. 
Um, I have a feeling most of you, well, including us, would rather be watching the game than doing a program while the Jets are playing. So kind of like we did last week, we're going to move up the time of the program. And instead of going a one to three, we're going to go 11 to one. And, you know, we'll touch maybe briefly on the Minnesota game, but I'm really looking forward to getting ready actually for the Jets Calgary game the next night uh, with my pal Pat Steinberg from Sports at 960 in Calgary. So we'll talk to uh, Pat about that. Pat certainly will have some takes on the Riders and Stamps as well. Maybe we'll reach out to uh, Marshall Ferguson, but we'll have lots of football content heading into the weekend, both NFL, CFL, and Jets Flames content. So uh, this show's got a little bit more shelf life than basically doing a pregame show for the Minnesota Wild. So programming note, 11 a.m. Friday for the folks watching us live on YouTube. And uh, if you do watch the game afterwards, most of the content will be kind of focused on the weekend, including the Jets against the Calgary Flames, who had another big win last night. But Rima, before we talk about the Wild, before we talk about the Calgary Flames, we got to talk about this game tonight against the Columbus Blue Jackets. And you know, we spent a lot of time yesterday discussing where the Jets are right now after a couple of, you know, regulation losses. Five on five, they've actually been quite good. Special teams still continue to be an issue. But, man, I was looking at this schedule, thinking about the teams they're playing over the course of another three games in four nights with your favorite, all different time zones. I'd say this is a very important game for the Winnipeg Jets to win tonight because uh, it's going to be tough going up against the Minnesota Wild on Friday afternoon. And then the Calgary Flames have been one of the great stories so far this season in the National Hockey League. And I'll tell you what, on the back end of three and four with the travel that they've had, that is one of those games that a lot of times you sort of circle. Murata Tash yesterday talked about a schedule loss. If you had to go through the 82 games of the Winnipeg Jets, that one you might project to be exactly that. So I think it's really important they come up with a good game tonight and most importantly, leave Nationwide Arena with two points in the standings. Yes, uh, I, I agree too, Hustler. I think this uh, schedule coming up, this is a bit of a grinder uh, week, as Paul Maurice oh, likes to call it. grinder M- weekend, yes. M- multiple time zones. you got an afternoon game, uh, back-to-back. Uh, they're throwing the, ki- the schedule kitchen sink at you this week, so I think it's important to start off, uh, start off strong tonight with a win against Columbus team who, you know, you're looking at the roster. You know, some of these guys you're familiar with, but some are like, who are... Who are these guys? And I see people asking about uh, the Jets lineup tonight. Paul, you know, Ken Weeb uh, tweeted out, uh, Paul Stasny was on the ice, uh, but he was skating as the extra player. Connor Hellbuck is going to start. We do have Connor, Dubois, Wheeler, Kopp, Shifley, Ehlers, Harkins, Lowry, Svetch, Toner, Tony Nato, Nash, Veselainen, Morrissey, Schmidt, Dylan Pionk, Stanley DeMello, and Beaulieu, the extra D. So no... No changes, going with the same thing, going with the same lineup that uh, Ochoa, Vancouver, uh, I would say, outplayed Pittsburgh for two periods. But, I mean, you can always bring out bring out the blender, but I think, uh, you know, I com- I'm kind of curious what's going to happen with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. I know we'll hear his comments later, and also Jack Rosovic, who had a bit of a slow start to the season, but it did uh, break out again that game against Buffalo the other night. So, uh, here, we, here we go, starting off yeah. uh, the road trip tonight. Well, and Roslovic, I mean, we've spoken about Roslovic, I guess, last week or so, and, you know, he was sort of mired in fourth-line duty, which is surprising when you think about the opportunity he got under Torts last year, the lack of centers on the Blue Jackets. I mean, I really, I expected Jack Roslovic to have a much greater role. Now, good news for Jack, you know, he did have two goals and an assist against Buffalo in their last game, so... Maybe he's regained his mojo. I would imagine he'll be very excited to play against his old team tonight as well. So Mike McIntyre is going to join us from Columbus in just a couple minutes. Remo, before we we do that, I I know a lot of people have been talking about it's been a huge topic on social media over the last 24 hours. What do you think about these new Olympic jerseys? Canada dropped theirs last night. We're seeing the USA ones today. And like with everything, I mean, often you'll put something out on the internet and just about everyone hates it. Or maybe it's just the people that hate everything are the loudest. I will say this. I'm not really in. I I don't mind the white jerseys of Canada. Not a big fan of the black one. And even the red one with the black maple leaf looks a little weird. Maybe it'll grow on me forwards going forward. Certainly my favorite one of the three Canada unis is the white one with the red maple leaf. Yeah, I'm going to throw them up here on our YouTube channel. A lot of reaction. I see a lot of, um, I'll be honest, like, I'm like, yeah, these are these are fine. I don't 
I think the white one is by far the best one. I agree. The white one, I like. It reminds me a lot of the 2010 ones. Um, this Maple Leaf design, I'm not, I'm not crazy, but I saw people comparing it to the Huawei logo or the NBC Peacock <laughs> yeah. logo. Um, it's okay. I think it's okay. I, I prefer, you know, ones they've used in the past. I'm not, a, I'm not crazy with the shade of red on the red jersey and the black Maple Leaf and the black Maple Leaf on the black jersey. But I think the design is fine. I mean, a couple tweaks. I don't. I don't, I'm not in love with them. I don't think they're like they're trash, like people are saying on social media. I think they're fine. That's that's my take. I don't know. The USA, the US ones um, came out today as well, and yeah. everyone's dunking all over those. I, I don't actually mind them. Now, whatever that royal blue one um, is, isn't great. I, I'll say this: I'm not, I'm not running to royal to pick up the the one that I want to get. To be honest, the nicest one that I've seen so far, and I have yet to see the Swedish ones, and I don't even know what Russia is called or whatever they the the rock again, the uh, rock nation um, jerseys. Oh, rock! The, yeah, yeah. The Finland, the Finland jerseys are sick. Um, you know, often they've just had you know some sort of a logo. They basically have that whatever that lion is on the shield. Um, so I, I think those ones are the best ones that I've seen so far. Um, and I can see the, uh, the the USA ones are it's sort of weird. They've got this thin line through the middle with USA on them. Um, and I've always thought that USA jerseys actually have been quite cool. So um, I don't know. Maybe it's a new uh, it's a new look. But um, I have a feeling that within a week or so, people will come around on a lot of it. And I will tell you this: if you want to pick them up, Royal Sports, our great friends, will uh, be stocking uh, all the Olympic gear on the ASAP, but especially Team Canada if you want to get them for holiday gifts and presents and, of course, to get ready for the Olympic Games coming up in a matter of uh, just a couple months, believe it or not. So we've got that. I'll tell you what, if I went to Royal right now and I was making a purchase and I wanted to get something Canada, I think I'm so firmly entrenched on the Canada soccer bandwagon. I think that's first on my list. I've already got a lot of Hockey Canada gear. The the, the Canada soccer with what we're doing with the World Cup, to be honest, is uh, is at the top of my Christmas wish list. But you can get all over it with our friends at Royal. Yeah, I think the Canada jerseys, like, I think they're okay. Um, I, I, one thing I'd never get, like, why they feel like they need to make new jerseys. Like, we see all these NHL teams having a heritage jersey. Like, why not bring back? I mean, everyone, I think everyone agrees the 2010 jer- Canada jerseys are the best ones, or maybe the 72. I think it depends where you grew up. I like the 02 ones. I think the 06 ones are the worst. What about uh, 87 these, Canada Cup? Yeah, I mean, those are those ones too are, are quite good. So, why not iconic? Br- why not bring back some of the iconic? And like, I remember the two, I remember 2002. I love the jerseys. I have the Sackick jersey behind me uh, here. I'm as I point. Um, I remember when 2006, they came up with these new jerseys they thought were terrible with the vertical striping down the sides. I was like, why are they making new jerseys? Just wear the other ones. Those were elite. They just won gold. And then 06 happened, and uh, no one remembers 06. I can tell you took accounting in university and not marketing because, um, (laughs) dude, I mean, hey, it's a new event. they got to sell new jerseys. Everything has got to be new. And I think it's quite clear that Nike, who's doing the the Canada ones, I – I'm not sure whether the the U.S. ones or may, maybe they're doing all of the unis. I mean, you know, usually they'll get a particular style that will that work with the, um, you know, the different teams or mm-hmm. governing bodies, um, to make new jerseys. But yeah. everybody wants to sell something new, um, and I mean, for professional teams, you can't change your jersey every year. But a lot of teams basically are doing that with a third jersey, an alternate, a heritage uni. Um, so it's just really par for the course. Bottom line is get the one that you like, and um. Support the team that you want. I want, and, uh, I want the 98 Nagano jersey. I actually like those ones. I like the number font on them. I like the style that USA actually used those in 2002. But why not have a Heritage jersey? I mean, Hus, the, the Canadians have never changed their jersey. Same with the Blackhawks. Yeah, they have an alternate. But why is, I don't know, Canada? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't would, like, yeah. I, I, I would say, I mean, you mentioned the Habs. And I mean, I can't stand the Habs. Can't stand the Leafs. I mean, you know, there's other teams. But I will say this. I think the Montreal Canadiens have the most iconic uniforms in sports. I mean, when people ask me, what are the best uniforms in sports? I mean, I'll begrudgingly give the pinstripes of the New York Yankees a nod um, when it comes to classic, you know, although I hated the new ones with the Nike swoosh on it. I can handle the Nike swoosh on just about everything, but it looked very, very out of place on the Yankees uni. 
But I will say this, the 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 blue blanc et rouge of the Montreal Canadiens, the red based jersey, to me, I think if I had to vote for the best uniform in sports, that is it. And take that from someone that begrudgingly gives them that because I can't stand the team. But I mean, there's a reason why they've stayed with that uni for so long is because it is absolutely classic and uh, I don't think can be improved on. Yeah, I, I agree. And. Look, they got. To, I guess they do have to sell jerseys, but let's bring back some of the uh, some of the classic ones. I think people want to see that. Um, but well, I think do these... that here in Winnipeg. I mean, we've just seen how popular mm-hmm. the heritage jersey is right now. Yeah. I get more comments from friends outside of the market, um, friends in KC that are you know tuning in to watch a Jet game, and whenever they see that jersey, they're like, "Wow, that is so." I mean, to me, that is as good of a. Uh, a retro jersey as uh, has been made in a long time, and I know everyone around uh, the city and province was pretty fired up when the Jets went to that uniform for 14 games this season. And to be honest, I wouldn't at all be surprised if we're talking about um, you know in a year or two potentially maybe that being the Jets' main home jersey and moving forward from that. All right, we're gonna head to Columbus in just a second and hook up with Mike McIntyre of the Winnipeg Free Press, who's been. Uh, working hard for the last few days getting ready for this game tonight as we do that do want to thank our one of our newest sponsors vita health fresh market stocked with winnipeg's best selection of local organic and natural groceries supplements and beauty products all at incredible prices with an amazingly knowledgeable and trained staff to help you get what's right for you and your family uh, if you're into organic produce local grass-fed meats or a great grab-and-go deli for those of you on the run that want to eat healthy with amazing salads and sandwiches. Vita Health and Fresh Market is the place for you. And, uh, of course, 85 years in business, family-owned in Winnipeg since 1936. Now with seven Winnipeg locations, including the newest store in Linden Ridge and online at myvita.ca. I know we're getting out of the summer. Sometimes people have a little bit more time moving around. I mean, what you put into your body is incredibly important. And the folks over at my at Vita Health will be able to help you dominate your day seven days a week. And uh, speaking about doing what's right for your body, I mean, it all starts with water and Culligan water. And the Culligan folks have been the experts when it comes to the water biz for 65 years in Winnipeg and Southern Manitoba. Family owned 1200 Sergeant Avenue. Um, They've got it all. I mean, we're talking about water filters, softeners, bottled water coolers, um, you know, whole home drinking systems, as well as drinking water systems and citywide water delivery services right to your home. And of course, they can also help you at your business as well. Um, You know, you've got to keep your employees hydrated and uh, commercial and industrial water products and solutions available from the Culligan man as well. Find out more on what Culligan can do for you at drinkculligan.com or give them a call at 694-5180. Of course, Culligan over at 1200 Sargent Avenue. And hey, anyway, healthcare workers out there that might need a new battery for the upcoming winter for their car, Up until the end of November, Donnie and the gang over at Manitoba Battery have a great promotion for you. No taxes for any healthcare worker or frontline worker that have helped us get through the challenges of COVID right now until the end of the month. And uh, with December right around the corner, snow is here, sleds are back, but you might need a battery for your sled. Of course, Manitoba Battery has batteries for everything, including snowmobiles. Most are in the range of $65 to $75. You can give them a call at 783-8787 or pop down and see them at 1026 Logan Avenue for more on what they can do for your sled. And of course, still with the best prices in town for automotive batteries. It's all there at manitobabattery.com. All right, let's head out to CBUS. Big game tonight, 6 p.m. start And Mike McIntyre got an early start on the road trip with so many storylines going into the game tonight. And uh, Mike joins us from Columbus, Ohio right now. Mike, what's going on? Thanks for doing this. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, Huss. Uh, Good to be here and uh, good to be on the road for what should be a pretty compelling matchup tonight. And no shortage of storylines in play in this one. Of course, Patrick Laine won't be uh, participating in the game. That would have really put this one over the top and that was part of the reason I actually headed down here early. You know, when I booked my flight a, uh, a couple months ago, uh, this was lining up to be the Line A return. And it also was going to be the Blake Wheeler 1000th game 
Uh, of course, Patrick Laine ended up getting injured and Blake Wheeler uh, got COVID, which cost him five games. So his 1,000 has been uh, hunted down the road by a couple of weeks. So uh, not not as many storylines, but still uh, obviously Pierre-Luc Dubois making his hometown return to the team that drafted him third overall. And don't forget about that Jack Roslovic guy who's coming off his best game of the uh, season on Monday night in Buffalo. And he also got Pascal Vincent, um, a guy whose fingerprints are all over this Jets team and so many of its young players. Uh, Pascal Vincent, of course, will be on the Blue Jackets bench as the associate coach. Mike, uh, speaking of traveling, of course, I'm in Saskatoon out at the curling. And just before we get to the Jets, I will say that your colleagues, Jay Bell and Melissa Martin, along with Ted Wyman, are tearing up every karaoke bar in town yes. throughout the course of the weekend. I mean, I think they are almost a, a <clears throat> touring karaoke act, a group of them. So um, you are you are missing that. We may have to get a special date to see their work as a as a team sometime back in the city. But enough about karaoke. Let's get to this game tonight. Um, well, let's start with Dubois. Um, I know he spoke earlier today. We're going to try to have some of that at the end of the program. Um What's the atmosphere like around Columbus with Dubois coming back? I mean, we know when Columbus comes here, it'll all it'll be about the return of Patrick Laine. Right. But the fact that Dubois left in the way that he did, had a poor season last year, and now has been arguably the Jets' best forward through this part of the season, what's that done to the storylines, the narrative, and the conversations around this game tonight? By the way, before we completely leave the karaoke conversation, let me just say that one of my first jobs as a teenager – was helping uh, my cousin's then husband uh, who owned his own karaoke equipment back in the mid 19 early to mid 1990s. I, I actually worked karaoke bars in Winnipeg. Uh, we used to do Santa Lucia out on Regent. We did uh, uh, BCWs out on, uh, on Portage Avenue anyways. And I used to get up and belt out a tune or two. So uh, we may have, if, if the free press were to one day like enter some kind of karaoke team, uh, certainly Jay Bell would be at the top of that team, as would Melissa. But I'd like to uh, to stake my claim for a spot on that team as well, because I think I could hold my own. Hey, listen, I've got that club in my bag, too. Maybe we put up our own team and challenge them for the belts at some point soon. I like it. I like it. Uh, good good move. Ted, Ted Wyman, maybe he can provide the... The, vol- the, uh, the musical accompaniment uh, with his guitar. So, yeah, it'd be a good time. Uh, yeah, I mean, big media scrum, not surprising down here in Columbus today for the return of, of Pierre-Luc Dubois, who, let's face it, Huss, he looks and sounds like a different player these days. This is a guy brimming with confidence. He is carrying himself on the ice and off the ice as a leader. Um, and he has become a go-to player, a real leader for this Jets team. I think we forget sometimes he's still very young, um, but uh, I would say an argument could be made that he now is in the running to be Winnipeg's number one center. And uh, you know, part of that, I suppose, is Mark Shifley's off to a bit of a scuffling start here, uh, not helped by his COVID diagnosis. But you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois and Kyle Connor, they – In a way, they've become the new Wheeler Shifley, right? The one-two punch. And they are really steering things for the Jets. So, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois, I think this is a game that he's had circled on his calendar probably since the the day the schedule came out. And I get the sense that he's looking forward to it, uh, that that this is a guy who um, is really comfortable in his own skin and he's comfortable as a Winnipeg Jet. So he's, you know, had this game happened, you know, last season, um, it might have been a lot more difficult for a guy that was really struggling to find his way. But that's not the case anymore. Pierre-Luc Dubois is absolutely feeling it. And I would not be surprised if we see uh, a real solid performance from him tonight uh, at the arena that, you know, he called home for, for his first few seasons. Well, exactly. And Remus, don't let me forget at the end of the program, we do the cool bet lines to take a particular look at the props for Dubois tonight, because I do have a feeling he'll be, uh, he's already been phenomenal this year, uh, <clears throat> but I think he'll be looking at having uh, his biggest game so far this season for the Winnipeg Jets, a team, Mike, that needs a win right now. I mean, yeah. You know, we've spent a lot of time talking about the way that they've been playing. And for my money, I mean, this is as good as we've seen five on five for an extended period for a pretty long time. 
third period of the Pittsburgh game notwithstanding. Um, but, man, I mean, the penalty kill has been a big issue so far. And now, all of a sudden, the power play, which of the two yeah. special teams units was one that seemed that they could really rely on, scuffling as well. And, I mean, look no further than those two factors, both penalty killing and power play is a big reason why the Jets just have one point in their last three games. For sure. And it you know could have made the difference uh, if the power play could have bagged one in overtime against Edmonton. They win that game. If the penalty kill doesn't give up the two goals the next night in Vancouver, you know, a one goal loss maybe is a one goal win. And the Jets are right there with Calgary, you know, top spot in the Western Conference. Instead, they come in now here to start this road trip, Haas, on a, on a three game slide, 0 2 and 1. And this is not an easy road trip. Like Columbus is, I, I know they're missing Patrick Line, but uh, they're going pretty good right now. This is a young team. I was talking with Pascal Vincent earlier today. Uh, he's, he believes they're, they are the youngest team in the NHL. That stat can vary from day to day, of course, depending on roster moves. But, you know, he talked about all the energy uh, and not to mention the skill and the talent. And I think there's a real sense that these guys, you know, Columbus is kind of ahead of its schedule, maybe in a way of, of a retool. And so they're kind of playing with some house money. They're scoring a ton of goals. I think they've had 19 in the last four games. Uh, they're also giving up a lot though. So it, it could be, you know, if the jets could find a little finish around the night, this could be uh, an, around the net tonight could be a, a real fun game. Uh, you know, especially if they start getting into a bit of a run and gun track me, but this is not an easy road trip because after here, of course, the jets go face a wild team that I think early in the year has proven itself to be a, uh, one of the better teams in the West and the Jets, as we know, had their hands full with Minnesota on that season opening road trip. And then they go on a back to back on Saturday into Calgary and face the number one team in the West. And who would have thought that would be the flames. Uh, so, you know, you don't want a three game skid to suddenly turn into a four, five, six game skid. And, and so the Jets, um, you know, they, they want to get off to a good start on this road trip, obviously tonight. And, uh, they don't got a lot of time here with three games in basically four days, but uh, I, I look for a, a, a real strong effort from the Jets. And, you know, you often hear in sports, the, the money on the board. I suspect there's a little money on the board tonight, <laughs> Huss, when it comes to Pierre-Luc Dubois and the Blue Jackets. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, there should be money on the board just for popping a damn goal right now because, I mean, <laughs> what the Jets have been doing. I mean, I was talking to Marat yesterday. I don't have it in front of me. We were trying to figure out what the Jets' shooting percentage has been over the course of the last right. couple of weeks because it's been way low. I mean, they have been, especially at five-on-five, five, being creating and so much. And to be honest, what happened, and I'll get your perspective on this just to go back to Monday night, you know, for the way that they played, you know, against Edmonton, against Vancouver, special teams notwithstanding, um, you know, they're creating so much, putting so much on net without any success. Did you find that maybe there was some frustration that got into the Winnipeg yeah. Jets game that got them away from what they'd been doing, which had been successful in every single aspect except for putting red lights on? Yeah, I did get that sense for sure. And that's a good point by you, Huss. I mean, the Jets through the first half of that game the other night, they probably deserved to be up by a lot more than a goal, right? Um, and, you know, I'm sure in their minds, they're going, geez, here we go again. We just saw you know, Stuart Skinner of all people kind of stonewall us in Edmonton. And then, then Demko is, is standing on his head the next night. And and now Tristan Jari's kind of doing it. A guy that came into town having recorded back-to-back -back shutouts and yeah, they get one by him by the fourth line, which normally you'd think should kind of get everybody going, right? Like, Hey, your fourth line scores. We got so much talent on this team. The floodgates should open Well, the floodgates did not open. That would be their lone tally. And and I get, I think there was frustration for sure. And if you look at how that game played out, I mean, the Jets of the first half of that game against Pittsburgh looked a whole lot different than they did in the second half. And I think, as you say, they got away from doing some of the things that that normally lead to success, but hadn't over the last few games and frustration crept in. The question now is, you know, can they go back to, the way they were playing for basically a, a long stretch, save for that last half of that game against Pittsburgh. And if they can, uh, I think patience will pay off and, and eventually the light will start going on, but uh, they just have too much talent to be held down. 
Uh, but for sure, special teams have been a big factor, right? I mean, I think their their power plays now in a one for eighteen funk, and nothing seems to be working. Blake Wheeler, the captain, you know, his passes that normally are are pretty sublime, those seam passes, they're not getting through. Um, goalies are making the stops, and frustration is certainly creeping in. Well, yeah, and as far as the, the the power play in particular goes, because I I think. They're going to try and do what they've been doing at five on five and expect better results because, you know, one would expect that to happen with sure. the amount of pucks they're putting on and the chances that they're getting. I don't feel the same way about the power play and the power play right now, Mike, if there was ever a time maybe for a, a somewhat of a shakeup or doing a few things differently or maybe back to what had been before, because we have seen Wheeler in a different spot. And if you right. look at when the Jets have been the most successful on the power play, a Big part of it has been Blake Wheeler running that thing through the wall as opposed to being high, high or you know, low behind the net where he's been at sometimes yeah. lately. I mean, um, I don't, you know, you've, you've heard from Paul Maurice already. I'm not sure whether they got into that, but do you expect some different looks when it comes to the Jets power play considering the power outage they've had over the last couple of weeks with the man advantage? I do. And, you know, it may not necessarily come tonight uh, because Paul Stasny is going to miss an eight straight game. It sounds like Stasny is a very good chance he gets in on uh, on Friday in Minnesota. The Jets are going to practice on U.S. Thanksgiving tomorrow as we uh, as we head uh, to St. Paul. The Jets will get a skate in. And I do suspect that once Paul Stasny comes in, first of all, we'll see personnel changes on the power play. And for folks who wonder why Riley Nash continues to be out there, I suspect that puts an end to that. I was just um, going to say, Mike, what do you think people in Columbus are going to think of when the jet power play rolls out and Riley Nash is on that unit tonight? <laughs> yeah, as some have joked that Rick Nash is still a member. He's actually a member of the uh, of the organization here, the management. So a lot of folks, I've been asked, you know, does Paul Maurice think the R Nash in his lineup is actually Rick Nash? Um, it, it's a puzzling move for sure. And you wonder, I mean, Hey, I, at this point, I'd be willing to try just about anything. What about, what about trying Evgeny Svechnikov, you know, net front? Uh, he's a big guy. He likes to get his nose dirty. He's got some hands. Like I get the whole right shot thing that that's kind of what they're clinging to here, that they don't have a lot of right shots. But if you're going to park Riley Nash kind of in front of the net like they have been, I mean, I'm not sure what his handedness really, how that's helping things much. And clearly the numbers would suggest it's not because they've not been been successful. So I'd like to see them maybe try. I mean, maybe whether it's Adam Lowry back in front of there or whatever. I mean, it's clearly not working and it's become quite predictable. And, and you know, it's become a real Achilles heel uh, for the Jets, for sure. Their five-on-five five play, absolutely no concerns there. Uh, but as we all know, Huss, special teams is such a big part of of success or failure in the NHL. And in a league that, you know, the old saying, it's a 3-2 league, right? If you're getting beaten on a regular basis on both your power play and your penalty kill, uh, you are really stacking the deck against yourself. Yeah, you better you better be putting a lot in the net at five on five right. if uh, both those special teams units aren't getting the job done, which is sort of where we're at right now. And uh, part of the reason why, as well as the Jets have played for the majority of the time at even strength, um, you know, the results haven't been there. And, you know, for the first yeah. time since the beginning of the season, they've lost a couple in regulation in a row. Um, just looking ahead for a second, when Stasny comes back, I mean, the lines haven't really changed coming out of that L.A. game, and you know, we've sort of talked about the reason for that. I mean, they've been quite good at 5-on-5, five five, although the results haven't been there. How yeah. do things look different when Stasny comes back in, and what gets shaken up, do you think? Well, I, I suspect Stasny probably slides in with Adam Lowry on the third line, and if I had to guess, you know, if, if, if Paul Stasny were coming in tonight, for example... I suspect it's probably Jansen Harkins that gets bumped down. And so then you're running a third line probably with, with Lowry, Stasny, Svechnikov. And I would say you have the option there of maybe flipping Wheeler and Svechnikov at some point um, and getting Svechnikov back up with Dubois and Connor, where that line certainly was doing some pretty good things. And I would be really intrigued to see a a Wheeler, Lowry, Stasny line. Don't forget Paul Maurice at one point, not too long ago, had a line of Lowry, Wheeler, Shifley. And he said that he was intrigued by what that line can do. And 
I thought they had a couple nice games, especially that game uh, against the St. Louis Blues that the Jets lost in overtime on home ice. That might have been their their best game in this recent stretch here, uh, where, again, they didn't get the result, but uh, they sure played their tails off. Uh, so, you know, Blake Wheeler, uh, does he go down there and play with with Lowry and, and Stasny, perhaps? But I think right now it's probably a guy like Harkins goes down to the fourth line and then, you know, you've got some combination on the fourth line, whether it's Christian Veselainen that comes out of the lineup uh, as a result, as the trickle down. Is it Riley Nash who comes out? He's not going to be on the power play anymore. Riley Nash a few weeks ago, Huss, was a healthy scratch when the Jets were running 11 forwards at one point. So if 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 Riley Nash isn't killing penalties successfully and, and he's struggled in that department, um, his spot in the lineup is probably tenuous. You could play Harkins at center. I mean, I wrote the other day, Huss, uh, at what point do you consider making a call to David Gustafson, who oh. is leading leading the Manitoba Moose in scoring, leading one of the best penalty-killing units in the American, American Hockey League. He's a big body. He's your future. He's your drafted and developed talent. Riley Nash is not. Um, at some point, I mean, if, if they continue to struggle, uh, especially on the penalty kill, I got to think a call to David Gustafson is coming in, in relative short order. Mike, I mean, we've talked about this with you. I mean, certainly with Ken over the last couple of weeks. I mean, to me, that time has since passed. I would have expected. And I realize, you know, there's the, they put the, put the team together. And in almost all cases, Jansen Harkins coming up, establishing himself. I mean, it, you know, almost every time it's been due to injury that has been the, the, right. the, where guys have gotten called up. But when you look at what this team's doing, the way that they're able to play and what is hurting them right now, um, I think there's a very valid argument that it makes a lot of sense to give David Gustafson an opportunity to come in, play on that fourth line, and see if his presence, both in the face-off circle as well as on the penalty kill, can help the Jets get a few more results. And I think we've said this before. I'm not sure whether I said it with you or with Ken. I mean, I do expect when Gustafson gets this call, to move down the hall from the Moose dressing room to the Jets dressing room, it'll be a one-way ticket. I guess that's optimistic yeah. to think that that'll be the case. But I, I really don't know how much more he has to prove right now with the Manitoba Moose. He's doing everything that you'd want a young player to do. He did it all last year. He's doing it again this year. And I'd argue that he's probably the one guy of the young players in the mix that I'm not sure if he got really got a fair shot, to be honest, through no. training camp, considering <clears throat> the guys that he was playing with, the games that he was playing in. But I don't think he's done any disservice to himself with what he's done on the ice. And certainly you look at what's happening with this hockey club, and I think there's certainly a compelling argument to be made that he could make this team better as soon as he gets in the lineup. For sure. And, you know, I think this is an example, Huss, where the Jets being so tight to the salary cap ceiling is a real detriment right now. Because I, I would argue if the situation was such that the Jets were carrying 23 skaters on their roster as they normally do, but they simply can't this year because they just don't have the cap space as the team is currently constructed. The David Gustafson, he might be here already. Like they may have brought him up and maybe it doesn't mean he's in every game, but he probably gets a game or a chance. And I just think right now, like Paul Stasny, it's a perfect example. The Jets aren't putting Paul Stasny on long-term injured reserve. So they don't get the relief from his his absence, if you will, or his cap money doesn't free up. And they just they just can't fill these spots right now. It's why they played, you know, 11-7 for a stretch there with no healthy bodies at all on the roster, you know, when Shifley and COVID, uh, Shifley and Wheeler were out due to COVID. So I do wonder if this is a situation where Gustafson might have got his shot already this season if they were able to have another body or two around the team. That being said, um, you know, I, I agree with you. He's doing everything right on the farm. This is also a guy, Huss, just, just to make it clear, he's got a great attitude. This is not a, a prima donna. There's no sense of entitlement or that, you know, he, he's not down there pouting, saying the Jets oh, owe me far anything. from it. The guy's playing his yeah. ass off right now and doing all the things from the Manitoba Moose that Paul Maurice, I think, when he looks at his special teams units, especially on the PK and at 5-on-5, five five, would, would 
you know, would help things out. So uh, that'll be yeah. something that we will follow. Um, you know, I, it's hard to imagine him doing much more to earn that spot. And I think you do make a great point to I me mean, due to the cap. But I mean, at this point, I'd be more than willing to send somebody else down. I mean, put Wiley Nash on waivers. I mean, what waivers, did he come yeah. here for, right? He came here to be a fourth line player and contribute on special teams. And I don't think when they were saying special teams, they were imagining that it was going to be on the power play instead of the penalty kill, Mike. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're, you're in a way. I mean, you could argue he hasn't really made a contribution on either, but it is funny that he's he's a guy. If I had to guess, you know, Andrew Kopp is that one player that that plays PP and PK. I never would have thought that Riley Nash might be the other Um and so, you know, when we go back to personnel changes, we talk about maybe on the power play. I think we're also at a point where maybe you got to start experimenting on the PK as well. And I don't mean putting Blake Wheeler back on the penalty kill because I didn't like that when the season began. I thought it was getting the captain's minutes up too high. And I think you have to really watch his minutes. But, you know, whether it means a guy like Kyle Connor is getting some PK time. And I think he was out there the other night when Andrew Kopp was in the box. They needed another guy. Uh, so that'll be something worth watching. But, you know, I get that Paul Maurice wants to try and, and balance his minutes here, everybody's minutes. But uh, in a in a results-oriented business where you, you want to get some wins here together, you got to do what it takes. And so certainly a storyline to watch going forward. No doubt about it. Mike McIntyre with us. Um, Mike, I do want to ask you uh, just quickly about Pascal. I mean, Wheeler's a bit of a lightning rod right now. A lot of people are kind of on him as the – the reason why they haven't won hockey games. I got to ask you about Nikolai Ehlers and Mark Shifley. What have you seen from them lately? And do the Winnipeg Jets need more from a twosome that, you know, certainly I, in my opinion, should maybe be a little bit more effective and more consistent. Although at five on five, again, we've talked about it. They've, yeah. they've certainly had chances, but again, much like some of the other usual suspects that we've been talking about to haven't had the results. Yeah, like I thought Nikola Ehlers had a really good game in Vancouver the other night. I thought he was the most dangerous, probably offensive player. Uh, didn't lead to anything, of course, but he had his chances. Certainly a much more quieter game against Pittsburgh the other night, and same with Mark Shifley. Ehlers, it looked like, was starting to heat up, right? He had scored in, I think, three straight there and uh, seemed to be shooting the puck a bit more, which to me is always a good sign when Nikola Ehlers is firing the puck. He scored a you know, a couple blistering one-timer blasts, and that, that was a positive. But you're right. I mean, think back, Haas, to all of those times folks around here were pining to have Wheeler, or sorry, Shifley and Ehlers playing together. I'm one well, of them. Well, they are. <laughs> they are. Uh, but it's not necessarily on the top line, uh, because I would argue that the line that Dubois and Connor is on is probably your, your number one line. But for sure, I mean, the Jets need more... We, again, it's a it's a results oriented business. You don't get points for your effort or for trying. There's no participation medals, and you know Mark Shifley, Nikolai Ehlers are expected to carry a big chunk of the offensive weight on this team. And the bottom line suggests that both of them uh, you need a lot more from for sure. Yeah, and, and and I'll say this. I mean, I really thought that they stepped up big time in the Edmonton series at five on five. Yeah. We know how much Mark Shifley got abused by Connor McDavid last year, and that wasn't the case in those matchups. Hey, before we go, you mentioned Pascal Vincent. I know you sat down with him. Um, maybe just give us a little bit of a tease to uh, your piece on Pascal and uh, how he's enjoying uh, his new role as an assistant coach uh, with the Jackets. Yeah. Yeah, he's loving it. I mean, other than the fact that he revealed that actually his wife and daughter, he hasn't seen them since mid-August. They're still back in Winnipeg. Uh, his wife works at a hospital in Winnipeg. His daughter, of course, is going to school. She's 10. And she can't get vaccinated yet, although she will be shortly. But uh, they, So they haven't even been able to come down here without the quarantine issues and kind of disrupting their whole lives. So uh, he misses his family for sure, and and he misses his hockey family back in Winnipeg. I mean, Pascal Vincent, as mentioned, his fingerprints are all over this Jets team. He talked today about the real pride he feels in watching guys like Logan Stanley, Jansen Harkins, Christian Veselainen. Those are guys that he obviously invested a lot of time in, but he actually talked about Josh Morrissey as well, a guy that he had very early in his career, who he talked about just what a turnaround he's seen from Josh Morrissey. Um, you know, Pascal, he, he last night he met up with uh, 
with some of the Jets uh, coaching staff and, and had dinner with them. And there was a bit of a reunion down at the rink this morning at Morning Skate with some players. So it was a real happy, feel-good moment. Uh, and to me, Hus, Pascal Vincent's the perfect guy for this job. As I said, Columbus is pretty much the youngest team in the league. Pascal Vincent is a guy who we know works so well with young players. This is a great environment for him. I talked to Jack Rosovic about it as well and the comfort level that's there. And, you know, he's got a lot of responsibility, Pascal does, as an associate coach here to Brad Larson. And it seems inevitable to me that he will be leading his own NHL bench one day. Uh, and who knows, maybe it'll be in Winnipeg, right? Uh, the relationship there with True North is tremendous still. And Pascal Vincent talked at length about how much he valued his time in Winnipeg and, and what that family meant to him. Mike, thanks so much for doing this. Looking forward to all the content coming up in the uh, Winnipeg Free Press and, of course, your report on the game as well as the uh, rest of uh, this uh, hectic road trip with the three games in four nights, all different cities, all different time zones, finishing up in Calgary on Saturday night. Thanks so much for doing this. You bet, Huss. Enjoy the trials. Take care. <laughs> right on. There it is. Mike McIntyre of the Winnipeg Free Press joining us from Columbus. 6 p.m. start tonight for the Jets and the Blue Jackets. Patty Newfeld of the Bombers coming up in just a second on the show uh, while we uh, get ready for the All-Star, one of 15 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to join us. Do you want to give a big shout-out to Royal Sports? Of course, December 5th is coming quickly. You know you're going to want to be stepping up in blue and gold for that game. And uh, maybe a new Bomber toque might be a nice addition, considering what the weather might be like. Uh, but Bomber fans are going to be ready. They'll be bundled up. You can get your Bomber gear over at Royal Sports, along with an incredible selection of Jets merchandise, NFL, NBA. They've got it all. And, of course, as we talked off the top of the program, if you like those Canada Olympic unis, they'll have all the Olympic gear right away at Royal Sports, your headquarters for Team Canada. And as I said, my list begins with a Canada soccer jersey as well. All of it over at Royal Sports. Of course, the uh, number one hockey store in town. And with the snow falling, snowboard gear and equipment as well ready over at Royal Sports. A big thanks to our friends at Not Auto Corp. Got a, got a text from Trevor not last night while I was at the uh, at the Olympic curling trials. Very much torn as uh, having worked and being close with both Shannon Burchard from Kerry Anderson's team and, of course, Jen Jones. Um, but what a matchup that was. And uh, with the Not Auto Corp people supporting pretty much every Everything in Winnipeg and Manitoba. Tough choice for uh, a lot of folks, Trevor included. Of course, if you're looking for a new vehicle, before you do anything, why not get into the car of your dreams at a great price with the help of the Knot team? Pop down and see them at Waverly and McGilvery, or you can check them out online at knot.ca. And uh, next week, a big birthday for our friends over at Little Brown Jug, a new brew. Put out for the five-year anniversary, the Brute IPA. It's a celebratory beer brewed for Little Brown Jug's fifth anniversary, a champagne-like extra dry IPA with flavors of citrus and stone fruit. And if you're picking those up, why don't you grab one of the five-year tulip glasses as well? Special edition, an amazing way to serve the great taste of Little Brown Jug. We're going to do something special with the Little Brown Jug folks next week for the anniversary. In the meantime, check the website, littlebrownjug.ca. Gift boxes, you can make your own for somebody, or they've curated a number of them, and they'll deliver them to uh, whoever is on your wish list. And uh, you can check out some great new Little Brown Jug toques as well, all over at littlebrownjug.ca. All right, let's talk bombers. The blue and gold off this week, a well-earned buy while the Riders and Calgary Stampeders play for the right to come to IG Field on December 5th. But the big news today was 15 members of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers named to the West All-Stars. And one of those All-Stars joins me now, Patty Newfeld. First off, great to have you on the program. Thanks for doing this. And congratulations on uh, your first All-Star nod. Well-deserved, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite an honor, and I'm super pumped for our teammates, and uh, pretty great day. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, hey how uh, how do you do? You get a phone call tipping you off beforehand, or are you just on Twitter saying, "Oh, geez, my name's on this list." Uh, how, how did you find out about it, Patty? I, I got a phone call uh, the night before, which was pretty cool. So, uh, you know, I was able to tell my my friends and family, and and kind of tell them to keep it hush hush. But um, 
yeah, I got a phone call and then obviously seeing the news today and, and seeing all the all-stars across the league. So congrats to all those guys across the league. And yeah, that was, uh, that's how I found out. Well, I'll tell you what, um, uh, you know, you, it's a, especially at a position like yours, um, you know, often when you're playing great, that's when people don't notice you because no one's getting in the backfield. I mean, it's almost like being a ref at sometimes. No news is good news. Um, but the consistency it. that you and your teammates have, um, you know, put together on that offensive line, I think to a lot of people that, you know, follow football closely is almost the the anchor, the the the, the, the basis for the success of the Bombers on the front line. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about Stanley Bryant. We talk a lot about Jamarcus Hardrick. Uh, but yourself, I mean, Mike Couture, the entire group is really come together um and the continuity from that 2019 team i think you know, in a lot of ways you guys just picked up where you left off which was dominating the hamilton tiger cats in the 2019 Grey cup and uh, it's been a big big part your thoughts on the group that you're a part of on the offensive line and the season that you guys have had not as individuals but as a unit yeah, that's that's exactly it. And, and I think Mike this year should have all-star too. Um, you know, congrats to Sean McEwen, but I think Mike should have been all-star too. Um, but that was one thing that we talked about pretty early after the 2019 Grey Cup is we wanted to run it back. And um, we felt like if we could bring that group of guys back together, <clears throat> that we would have a solid chance. So that whole pandemic, we kept in touch and we were making sure that we were going to try and bring that same intensity, that same leadership, that same physicality that you guys see us play with. Um, back for the season and we knew if we could do that we would have a, a pretty good chance this year so um, you know I think as soon as we got through that early quarantine in camp and we got to hit the field together it was it was pretty seamless so we were very lucky in that regard where it wasn't a lot of new learning and, and not I'm not talking about like scheme I'm talking about how the guy next to you plays or how the left tackle is seeing this certain look compared to the right side is seeing that certain look. So uh, we were all pretty much on the same page as soon as camp started, which I think goes a long way. And, um, <clears throat> you know, with our group, we're, we're probably the longest group that served time together on this, on this team. So, um, you know, we wanted to show up, you know, as a position of leadership where people can see us um, communicating, playing fast, playing physical. And, and I think it's, uh, it's helped our team tremendously. So, um, you know, I love those guys, all, all nine or 10 of us, 11 of us. Um, we got some new faces in here this year, but I think everyone is, is really excited where we're at and, you know, we got to take it day by day. It's a, it's a tough grind these next uh, couple of weeks, but, uh, we're looking forward to it. You know, I was talking to Adam Big Hill yesterday on the program about the, the season overall. And, you know, we were uh, talking about, I was interested in his perspective, and I'll ask you the same thing about, you know, the final few games of the season, Patty, in that, I mean, you guys set out at the beginning of the season to win the West and have the road to the Grey Cup go through Winnipeg. Well, the way things worked out, you pretty much achieved that a month ago. Um, how challenging was it just to get through these final games when you know you'd really reach the goal? And frankly, it's all about being as healthy and as ready and prepared on the 5th of December for whoever comes to IG field. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. It's, it's something I've never accomplished in my career. Uh, this is the first time in my whole career that I've ever gotten first place in that first round by. So it's been new to me. Um, I think more so it, you know, fell more on our coaching staff and our football ops staff because as players, we, we go with the mindset, we're going to go in and win each game. Um, we're going to go in and we're going to play the same style of football that we've played since, since week one. Um, so I think if anything, it would be on, you know, on our coaches to try and kind of ease their, ease their reins back a little bit on us. Cause we're, <clears throat> we're a group that likes to go out there and get after it as, as, as a team. So, um, I think they've done a tremendous job with, with maintaining and making sure we're going to be as healthy as we can rolling into this, this West final. But, um, you know, we had a couple, couple points of adversity there that I think are great to learn from and, and a couple losses where we can reflect on and learn from. But, um, ultimately our, our mindset is to go in and, and, play as physical and, and fast as we can for that West final. And I think um, the way our, our football team has done that is, is prime to prime to go and do it. You know, I mean, you guys have been raising the bar or setting the bar really in the Canadian football league all season long. Um, and, you know, I can't help but just watch the way you guys played right out of the gate in game number one against Hamilton to think back to the identity of this team that won the Grey Cup in 2019. And it was one, I mean, all anyone needed to do was watch the, the, the game tape from uh, from uh, from the, the Grey Cup. I mean, it was complete domination on both sides of the football. And sometimes it's a little sexier when Willie Jefferson and Jackson Jeffcoat are killing QBs. But I mean, the running game was such a big part of it. And obviously, Strebler was there. A little different this season 
with Zach Caleros being you know the quarterback for the entire season. But I have to ask you, I mean, did the identity of that team that was all about winning those battles first and foremost on the line of scrimmage sort of carry over into this season? Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. You know, that's, like you said, it's it's the identity, it's the standard that we've set for this team. So uh, that's that's carried on throughout this entire year. And, and like I said earlier, it started at the end of that 2019 season when we won the Great Cup and we collectively saw how we did it. <clears throat> I think it kind of set the tone for what we want to do in the future. Um, adding Zach in has been obviously incredible. Um, in my opinion, he should be the MOP. Um, he's been phenomenal this whole season, and just his leadership and his confidence has really brought this entire team to another level. So um, I think when we can balance what we do up front really well, which is play physical and, and be able to pound the ball in any sort of weather, and then you have Zach balling out there throwing the ball to guys like Kenny and Darv and Dembski and and Wally and Rashid. I mean, I think we're we're a really well balanced team and poised to to do some great things. Now, that being said, nothing is easy. Nothing is already earned. It's about going out there and, and executing and playing physical and and uh, making sure we do the right things so we can get to where we want to be. Bombers All Star lineman Patty Newfeld joining us here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. You must love the way that sounds, but it would be an even better to sound uh, back to back Great Cup champion in a few weeks uh, joining us after the 12th of December, as we know that is what the goal of this football team is. As an offensive lineman, I know we've spoken before and talking to you and your teammates, um, you want to keep the quarterback upright and his jersey clean, and there's also an incredible sense of pride when it comes to the running game. Um, we know what Andrew Harris has done over the course of his incredible, soon-to-be Hall of Fame career. Brady Oliveira stepped in and proved that he is absolutely ready to go and be a contributor to the Canadian Football League. And then last game, we finally got a chance to see Johnny Augustine get home, and he absolutely went off. Yeah. Just fill us in the, the, the point of pride for you guys on the offensive line when running backs, especially young running backs who don't get a lot of opportunities because they have a guy like Harris in front of them can come in and ball out the way we saw Johnny did in the final game of the season. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a testament to those guys' work ethic and those guys' attention to detail. Um, they see how Andrew operates every day and he comes in and he has the same mindset as our offensive line does and he has the same vision that we do. Um, so those guys have done a tremendous job working to catch up and try and gain that kind of wisdom that Andrew obviously has had throughout his career, and, and they're trying to get to that same stage that he's at. So um, a lot of things Andrew does is, is pretty sensational, and his ability to, to read things the same way we would is, is second to none. So having, having guys like Brady and Johnny come up and try and attain and, and work to get to that level has been has been huge for our team. So it's always great when, when we can see those guys, you know, either lowering their pads through, through a little crease or, you know, making a cut and breaking a 20 or 30 yard run. So um, I'm really glad we have those two guys and, and um, just the backfield that we have in general. Well, and uh, let's face it, I mean, we're getting into playoff football, Patty. We're getting into cold outdoor weather, Winnipeg in December, for crying out loud. We've never had a later game. I mean, I, I mean, you guys will be working on the game plan next week, but it's pretty hard to imagine the way this team has been put together and what you guys have accomplished so far that a power running game and moving the chains and keeping the football in the hands of your quarterback and your center is not going to be front and center when you guys get out with whoever comes to town on the 5th of December. It's, it's what we love to do. And I, I think it's, it's an identity of our football team and it's, it's kind of an identity of what the city and this province is about. It's, it's a, it's a cold place to play and it's, it's a, uh, it's a hostile place that's going to be rocking on the 5th. So we're, we're super excited about it because we know being able to run the football and, and control time of possession in adverse weather is, is critical at this time of year. And like you said, we've never played games this late in, in the CFL, so who knows what the weather is like for us. We hope it's going to be colder and snowier than you can ask for, so that's that's our kind of weather. And, um, yeah, we're just excited to go out there and, and do what we do best. You guys are going to embrace the cold, and so are the fans. We're already over 27,000 seats for that game. We'd love to see it over 30 out. We'd love to see the yep. whole damn place packed with asses totally. and seats, and it's a little warmer when you're bundled up close by everyone. Uh, and that's, I think, what everyone is hoping to see for a very special Sunday afternoon here in Winnipeg at the beginning of December on the 5th. All that being said, you guys have the week off. How important is it, um, you know, even with the success that you've had, um, you're playing a lot of football. We know it's a very, very tough sport. I mean, from your perspective, maybe start with the offensive line, but the team overall, 
How important and how much of a benefit and an advantage is it for you guys to be sitting back, resting, and watching? Hopefully, the Stamps and Riders beat the hell out of each other this weekend before whoever wins comes to the peg. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Um, you know, we've we've come in every day into the building and and we've been doing our our recovery and and some workouts and stuff and just talking talking about what we're seeing on tape and um, it's it's nice to know that you've earned this this spot. You know, it, it's it's. It's great for our bodies. It's great for just a little chance to get a little bit of recovery and ease on the joints, especially for us big guys. So that's always nice. But, um, yeah, ultimately it, it just gives us a chance to really hone in on what we're going to be doing for, for Sask or for Calgary. So um, very interested to see how that, that game is going to play out. It's going to be it's going to be a fast physical game like all those Western playoff games are. So uh, just really excited to see who's going to come out of that and come to uh, this hostile IG field on the 5th. So, Patty, how, uh, I mean, other than, you know, going into the, the facility for a little bit of treatment or whatever, I mean, uh, how are you spending the bye week? Uh, what, what, what's, a, what's a rest day like for, uh, for a guy on the O-line? It's, it's, it's really restful. <laughs> it's getting off our feet. It's making sure we're, we're trying to get back to feeling as, uh, as healthy as possible, honestly. So we go in, we have a phenomenal therapy staff that does a really great job of taking care of us. So uh, we're doing every, everything we can. We're going to have a couple days of practice where we're going to go over some, some things against either with Calgary and Sasta so we can walk through those things and, and see the, the looks that they're going to do or that they might do. And, um, you know, just get back on the field, get running again, loosen things up, and, and get back to little football things after a couple days of, of rest. So um, nothing crazy, just making sure we're feeling as good as possible rolling into uh, the prep week for December 5th. Now, I know you guys aren't going to have a big rager on the weekend or anything like that, but uh, what what are your plans for the game? Do you get together with the team? Does the old line get together? I mean, uh, what will the Bombers be doing in Winnipeg while the Stamps and Riders are going at it at uh, Mosaic Field? So so for us, our offensive line, we've always had a tradition of, of eating together. Um, it's probably no secret to anyone that offensive linemen like to eat, so we're really lucky we have uh, Jeff Gray with us, who is... I would say the best cook in the CFL. Um, he probably likes cooking just as much, if not more, than playing football. Um, so we're going to go to his house, and he always cooks up just a, an amazing meal for us. And we're going. Gonna... What's the menu? What's the O line? How much work does it go in to be the chef for a Canadian Football it's, League offensive line chow it's, down? It's pretty substantial. So he takes a lot of pride, and, and he puts a lot of effort into it. So actually, this upcoming weekend, it's going to be kind of a highlight tape of chef jeff's cooking so he's going to make some corn dogs he's going to make some um some sliders he's going to make uh, a bunch of like different dips that he do- does he, it's just a whole a whole whack of stuff so um he was thinking about doing a brisket so we're not sure if he's going to do that it's it's kind of a little surprise but whatever he makes is always just it's the best so um it's, it's also a great opportunity for us to get together and just hang out outside of football and you know play cars play dominoes um get to watch the game together and just get closer as a group of brothers instead of just being, you know, we, we only see each other in the building. So it's, it's a pretty great situation. How would you classify the level of anticipation of your respective stomachs for the spread that one Jeff Gray will be putting on for the West semi? It's, it's a big prep week for it, man. You know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into making sure our bodies are ready for that day. So um, I think part of that recovery program is making sure we're ready to eat at Jeff's too. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, Patty Newfeld is with us. First time All-Star announced today. One of 15 Winnipeg Blue Bombers named to the Western All-Star team for a team that really dominated the Canadian Football League and certainly the Western Division right from game number one. One more game in the way before the Grey Cup. That's on the 5th of December. Patty, uh, before we go, how much have you thought about just the atmosphere, the opportunity? to? Because, I mean, you sort of nailed it. I mean, the Bombers are Grey Cup champs last year, but, I mean, it was all on the road. You were running down one other. This is a very different situation that you guys find out now. But we've also, not only the team, but the fans have had a month plus to get ready for this game. I can tell you from the public's view, I mean, this is the biggest game we've had in Winnipeg in, I mean, a long, long time. Um, We know the connection that you and your teammates have with the fans, the great season so far. What is at stake? Um, What's it like being a bomber and just thinking about that atmosphere and um, the challenge ahead of you with a potential trip to the Grey Cup on the line? Yeah, I mean, that atmosphere is going to be insane. Um, everything we, we do is try to make our fans happy and, and get them excited. And, and we want them to be proud of the product that we put on the field. So, um, you know, we're expecting that, that hostile, rowdy, just 
crazy excited Winnipeg Blue Bomber fan um, experience and, and honestly couldn't be more excited to run out of that tunnel and see you know 30,000 strong and in blue and gold going crazy for us so um, I get goosebumps talking about it right now it, it's I, I mean if it's going to be anything like it was at the start of the season on that that first game against Hamilton I think um, it's it's going to be a pretty amazing place to be on December fifth. So yeah, I'm, the, I'm going to encourage every every fan who, who can to come to that stadium because it's going to be a, a hell of a day and uh, a day to remember for sure. Yeah, if you don't have your tickets already, Bomber fans, what are you waiting for? Count yourself in, and uh, we will see you December fifth at IG Field. And uh, Patty, got to wish you luck. Congratulations on the All Star nod. And uh, we, uh, I, I, well, put it this way: the invite will be out in a few weeks, and hopefully, we'll be talking about two more big wins for the Bombers, and uh, then some, some more big meals made by Chef Jeff Gray to celebrate uh, everything you guys have accomplished. Good luck, enjoy the rest, and uh, can't wait for the fifth. Appreciate it, hustler. Take care, man. Right on. There it is, Winnipeg's own Patty the Batty, Patty Newfeld, All Star for the first time, very well deserved as well as uh, the rest of the Bombers. And, uh, you know, he did make a great point. Michael Couture had all the season this year, too. I have a feeling at a certain point the voters are like, you know, I got to pick somebody else at a certain point. We just can't have the entire Bomber team be all-stars. Uh, but Michael Couture has had a great, great season as well. Great stuff from Patty Newfeld, one of just the great guys. And, you know, of all the CFL players, very down-to-earth in a lot of ways, I sort of compare it to, in some ways, to the, the curling scene here. I mean, they are very much regular, regular people. But the uh, the most blue collar of them all are the guys on the offensive line. And uh, Patty Newfeld's just been such a great acquisition for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and uh, finally got the uh, individual rewards for what he's done so far this this year, and really over his career, being an all-star and being part of an offensive line that has been absolutely dominant from kickoff of this season. We're going to still talk a little more football because tomorrow we have Turkey Day in the National Football League. Three games to get to. Andy McNamara, my guy, is going to join us in a few minutes. Uh, but before we do that, let me get you our Princess Auto curling report. Of course, Princess Auto, proud sponsors of Team Mike McEwen, as well as Jennifer Jones. And last night, if you tuned in a little later, uh, I touched on it right off the top. Um, even if the most the person that had never watched curling before, if you were understanding what was going on, this was a heavyweight tilt between two of the best in the game, arguably the greatest of all time in Jennifer Jones and the two time defending Scotty's champion in Kerry Anderson. And, um, it, it, this was, I mean, just an absolute spectacle. Kerry going up six, nothing on consecutive steals of two in one, two and three. Uh, but Jennifer Jones, no quit in her team, taking advantage of a mistake by Anderson late in the game, giving up a steal of three did carry. And all of a sudden it was eight all going to the ninth end. Another steal put the Jones rink up nine, eight after trailing six, nothing. And I was with cool back Chris at one point in the game, going into the eighth down eight, five. Jennifer Jones' team was 80-1 to one to win the game. Now, of course, Kerry Anderson came up big, took advantage of a maybe a little bit of a missed shot on Jennifer Jones' final stone, a 10-9 win, Jones' first loss, and a huge win for Anderson. Uh, this afternoon on the field, or on the ice, I should say, down at Sastel Center, Four more games. Jen Jones has taken on Kelsey Rock. She's a big favorite in that game. Einerson, big favorite against the McCarville rank. Rachel Holman, one and three, desperate to run the table to get to the playoff. We'll see whether that happens. She's going up against Laura Walker. And uh, the one lone undefeated team out of East St. Paul, Manitoba, Tracy Fleury's team, a massive favorite against the Harrison rink. As far as tonight goes, more great action. Big wins earlier today. Mike McEwen um, and Jason Gunlickson ran into the buzzsaw that is Brad Jacobs, but still had a great game. Gunlickson, the Manitoba team, is going up against Brad Gushu, who's at the top of the standings right now. John Epping, his rank going up against Tanner Horgan. Matty Dunstone, Winnipeg native, 0-5 right now. Real tough first time at the trials, but it just speaks to how great this field is. Dunstone going up against Brendan Botcher. And what I would imagine would probably be the feature game on TSN tonight will be Mike McEwen's rink, sponsored by Princess Auto, taking on Kevin Cooey. So make sure to check that out if you're a curling fan. It doesn't get much better than this, the Canadian Olympic Trials. And, of course, Princess Auto is the place where you'll find the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around 
Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Prince S Auto. Uh, you know you love the finding the right tools and equipment to build or repair things yourself and make the dreams in your head come to reality. Prince S Auto is the place to be. Two locations in Winnipeg. Of course, headquartered in Winnipeg as well and family owned. But you can check out everything that Princess Auto has for you 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Uh, we did hit the Boston Pizza scoreboard, or we will hit the Boston Pizza scoreboard right now before we talk a little pigskin with Andy McNamara. Um, really busy game to, uh, a night in the National Hockey League. We won't have time to get the odds for all of these in our cool bet odds, but we will tell you, Jets and Blue Jackets starting it off at 6 p.m., Flyers at Panthers, Canucks at Penguins, Bruins and Sabres, Habs at Caps. The Minnesota Wild are in New Jersey to take on the Devils. St. Louis Blues at Detroit Red Wings. Battle of New York, Rangers at Islanders at the uh, Islanders' new rink. The Golden Knights in Nashville to take on the Predators. Ducks at Avalanche. Edmonton Oilers at the Coyotes. Leafs playing the Kings. Seattle Kraken hosting the Hurricanes and Ottawa Senators at San Jose Sharks. So we'll tell you what, there is plenty of options for you when it comes to filling out a DraftKings lineup or certainly making maybe a wager on the games tonight over at CoolBet.com. And a big shout out to our friends at the Nick and Nikki DTQ group. Uh, you know, you might be thinking, I don't want to go out tonight. I'm going to be watching the game. But, oh, I'd love a blizzard. I'd love one of those steakhouse burgers. Well, good news, especially for you folks in St. Vital. The St. Vital Nick and Nicky DQ is now open year-round, and it's also available on Skip the Dishes and Uber Eats. Of course, they've got drive through available at both the DQ in Niverville and the DQ Northgate, and, of course, DQ Polo Park as well. And if you're thinking about a DQ ice cream cake for an event or party you've got coming up, just hit them up on Instagram, at DQ Manitoba. They'll get a custom made for you, ready to pick up quick and easy and be the hero of your next gathering, at DQ Manitoba on Instagram for our friends over at Nick and Nikki DQ. And uh, cheers to Patty Newfeld, cheers to the Bombers, and cheers with the little Canadian club, the official sponsor and spirit whiskey of the Bombers and great supporters of ours. Friday, don't forget, an early show because of the afternoon jet game. We'll go live at 11 o'clock, and we will do another Canadian club marble race with a co-branded Winnipeg Sports Talk Canadian club bomber sponsor hoodie as well as the uh, little I Love Rye package with some of the good stuff for our second place finisher as well. And by the way, everybody that won on Friday, I will get back to you on the weekend or Monday when I'm back in the city to get you the uh, the goodies from last week. So big thanks to Canadian Club. Of course, you can pick that up at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. All right, tomorrow, one of my favorite days of the year. NFL Thanksgiving Day. We've got three games, an early start to a massive, massive week, especially if you're right on the playoff line in fantasy football or your team's pushing for the playoffs. And it has been way too long since we've had our next guest on the program. Buckle up and get ready for the electric energy of one Andy McNamara, who joins us now. Of course, he's the fantasy guy for Rogers Sportsnet at AndyMC81 on Twitter. Andy Mack, what is going on? It's great to have you on the show. How you doing, brother? The guy, hustler. I'm doing great, my man. I'm doing great. Happy to be back on with you as always. And this is like, for football fans, this is like Christmas. you got three days tomorrow, three games tomorrow. And the first one, you know, not the best, but it's still three. Yeah, it's like football games. it's like Christmas morning where you get coal in the stocking, but then you get two pretty good presents, which still right. makes it a great day. Um, I'll be honest. I was so locked into week 11 and then we were getting ready to do the lock shop on Tuesday and I'm looking at the games. Oh, we've got Thursday and I saw Lions Bears to start thing off and I just started Man. laughing. I mean, um, hey, you know, the Lions are a staple of Thanksgiving. They do have a tie on the board. Um. And they're taking on a Bears team that, for all intents and purposes, wants their coach out and out now. But apparently, because of the short week, he's going to get to coach one more game and then is going to be fired. Hard to imagine a combination of two bigger train wrecks for the first game tomorrow night than Detroit and a shy town Oh, that, that NFC North, baby. Woo! Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Matt Nagy. What, it just goes to show how quickly someone can be degenius to Hustler, right? Because remember... 
coming out of Kansas City, he was the guy. He was the forward thinker. He was the the mastermind behind the Kansas City off. Yeah, not so much. Maybe not so much anymore. Uh, this one's going to suck. It's going to be a bad game. Let's face it. There's no two ways around. It's going to be terrible. You got Timmy Boyle, who I don't know if they're, you They're at. not starting him again, are they? They have to go to Goff. Or if not, go to Mr. Blau. David Blau, now, because Boyle might be the worst quarterback to start in the NFL in a long time. And that is saying something. Andy, he was his college career. I think he was at Eastern Kentucky, 13 touchdowns, 30 picks. How he's yeah. even on an NFL roster, I have no idea. But I think it speaks to the lack of talent in Detroit. Um, well, and you saw it last week. Listen, that was a dud for the Browns. They escaped with a three point win against the Lions. Um, but it certainly wasn't a brilliant quarterbacking performance by Boyle that kept that game close. No, no, you're right. Tim Boyle is the worst quarterback in, in football. And how he had, how he even got an invite to a camp <laughs> is shocking with those, those not, not just subpar, just terrible college numbers. Like I know he's six foot four. Is just like, Hey, the guy's tall. Let's bring him in. Like it is absolutely atrocious. It looks like on a short week because of the oblique injury, he might be getting the nod. Like, I would go with David Blau, and he stinks too. But the thing what we have to remember is, is that there is always fantasy football relevance in these games, Hustler, okay? And when Dan Campbell, Mr. Knee Chomper Biter himself, the old, the, you want to talk about a guy who cuts a wrestling promo, Dan Campbell. <laughs> Let's go, right? Like, he's up down biting knee. This guy's throwing it back to the 1950s, where, like, the forward pass was like, I don't know about this thing, and I don't know, I'm not sure. He's running the football non-stop because he really doesn't have a choice so the best fantasy play is deandre swift based on pure volume and he's uber talented tj hawkinson i was like a in a good scenario he's a great tight end in this scenario not so much so you can oh. play him and i'm and, and i'm just is montgomery quickly on this big guy is mentioning boyle was the quarterback that played for the packers in that nfl exhibition game in winnipeg the infamous oh. 80 yard game <laughs> Maybe the most embarrassing three hours for the National Football League in oh. in a long time. And that, well, I, listen, they've embarrassed themselves a lot more than that. But that was an absolute joke. Well done, big guy, for, <laughs> for wow. marking that on and giving us another member of one of the darkest days and events in the history of the city of Winnipeg and everything that went in around it. All right, let's not spend <laughs> any more time talking about the Lions. They stink. No. However, no. the Bears... Um, and it sounds like Justin Fields is out, too. I mean, I, I think Andy Dalton is probably 10 times whatever they're going to put on the quarterback position from the Lions side of things. Um, but I also think that this team has quit on Matt Nagy. They can't wait to get him out. And uh, that's why I jumped on. I can't believe I'm doing this again. But going to the window and laying on the Lions at plus three and a half, that number is actually down to three because a lot of early action was in on the home dog. Listen. If the Lions are ever going to win a game this year, this is their best shot. You're right. This uh, is not, it. Like, this is it. This is, this is it. This is all they got. Because, like you said, lame duck coach who, who could and likely will be out next week. Um, it's a case where it's like, all right, are you – if they don't do this, if they don't win this week, they're in line to be the second team, the first team ever to have two winless seasons. There's no talent on that team. There is none on that team outside of DeAndre Swift. As far as true playmakers, they're undermanned. I don't blame the players. So I think it's a smart bet if you're ever going to take the Lions. It's not like the Bears are favored by 10 and you're taking a long shot. Like, would anyone be that surprised if Detroit really won at home? I wouldn't. No, nope, this is the day. And I just can't wait. Dan Campbell is going to be... I don't know if this is the Fox game or who's doing it, but I hope that Dan Campbell gets to chow down and bite the turkey leg instead of a oh. kneecap afterwards yeah. for the first win as head coach. I mean, he's got the tie. It's now time to win a game, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, see, we'll see that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Remus had just mentioning to me, uh, apparently Aaron Rodgers has something called COVID toe. Um, are, are you are you aware of this right now? What, what's the latest on the Packers and Aaron Rodgers coming off of COVID, um, really giving up that game when he wasn't able to play? Jordan Love started in Kansas City. Um, it's it, it's been quite interesting. But when I heard COVID toe, uh, that immediately got me wondering, like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I saw this actually literally just before jumping on with you. Uh, Aaron Rodgers held up his foot and his toes in the Zoom call for media to show the media. So on Twitter, you can see Aaron Rodgers' foot. He's showing. He's like, look, it's fractured. This guy's gone off the deep end. Oh, I hope uh, Rex like, Ryan wasn't on the call. <laughs> oh, you get, get him excited. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, you got to avoid that. Absolutely. There it is. That's, a professional, that's an MVP quarterback, folks. That's an MVP quarterback showing his toes. How many does he have? Three. I thought he had an extra one there. One, two. No, he, okay. It's only oh, that that's one. That's a finger. That's a finger. No, that's a finger. He has six toe. That wouldn't surprise me either. His, whole, his holistic COVID approach gave him another toe. So uh, I, 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 I don't know. A fractured toe, COVID toe. It, with Aaron Rodgers, I kind of will believe just about anything because nothing seems really impossible with that guy. But it's going to affect him the rest of the year. In all seriousness, it is going to affect him the rest of the year. Um, how much so? We're going to have to see. But a toe, like we see in basketball too, it's one of those injuries like in, and uh, what is it, turf toe in baseball you see a lot too. It's one of those ones like a toe, suck it up. You have to move and plant and pivot and push. That's a ser- that, that is a serious injury when it comes to impacting your performance. So I wonder going forward how that does affect Rodgers. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, all right, let's get back to tomorrow. Raiders and mm. Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys only scored nine points against the Chiefs, but the Chiefs are back. So we won't hold that too much against the Dallas Cowboys. Right. Raiders, however, not so much. Uh, my theory on on, on uh, Vegas, I was going to call them Oakland, Andy. Um, you know, I thought they really, after Gruden got whacked, the way they played coming out of that, it was very impressive. I mean, I was impressed, and I don't, like, I never have anything nice to say about the Raiders, as you well know. Yes. But you couldn't help, but you couldn't help but be impressed with the way they stepped up. But then with everything that happened with Ruggs, you know, I think, you know, a couple tough losses. Uh, this team is in a very tough position now with the, the shock of the Gruden thing changing and still a long ways to go. Um, I kind of think this is a get right game for the Cowboys. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking with Amari Cooper and CD lamb out for Dallas that the Cowboys win, but I don't think they cover that seven and a half. CD uh, is out. CD is out. Oh, that's, yeah. that's terrible for my, yeah. I, listen, I know. Oh my God. Go pick up Michael Gallup. Wire time. Wait for Wilson. Wire time. Hurry. <laughs> Dar- Darnell Mooney is available in 48% of leagues. Get yourself some Mooney. <laughs> Maybe Wilson. I like there's, that's why I do feel the Cowboys are going to win. But you take out those two significant weapons, both of them, the Raiders. Now, the last three weeks, the offense hasn't clicked, but they've had 26 or more points five times this year. Like, they have the horses to put up some points. I, I believe Cowboys win, but not by seven and a half. I think it's closer. And so if you're, you know, going sp- uh, betting on the spread, I think the Raiders cover. Yeah, I got him at six and a half earlier, but I'll be honest, oh, you nice. completely blindsided me with the CD <laughs> Lamb news of being out. I knew that he was That's questionable, and I thought that he might be able to play. Uh, yikes. All right, night game is the Saints and the Bills. Um, mm. I'm not high on the Saints, especially without James, James Winston. I think they got exposed a little bit against the Eagles, who I frankly don't think are very good. Um, but we have seen them in the last few weeks still play tough. I mean, we think about how close they got against the Tennessee Titans with a very greasy backdoor cover and a line that was so fishy. I mean, two and a half in Tennessee for an eight and two team against the Saints. But man, Andy, the Buffalo Bills, who uh, everyone was ready to anoint AFC champs after the Chiefs rough start, have not looked like a championship team over the past oh. month or so. What do you make of these two teams going into tomorrow night? Well, Buffalo's been weird because like um, they put up a couple stinkers this year like everyone you can have one but a couple of real bad ones against very winnable teams now they bounce back so uh what does that mean and also for really the first time in the josh allen era they entered the year as the true favorites and you got the patriots knocking on the door uncle bill is knocking on the door again saying don't forget about me i got the gravy right like they've walked through the door right now, actually. They got in the door first, and now the Bills are like, whoa, whoa hold on a second. Yeah. How are the they in front cold. of us? That's right. It, it, the turkey's cold. They're taking it to the microwave trying to reheat and, and reestablish what's going on, right? So that's why I want to see really, like, it's the first time with this Bills team we've really seen some adversity. How do they respond? How do they respond about not being in first or, or, or have that true competition with the Josh Allen era? So the Saints – defense is the run defense is good um it, it's it's like a good defense like it's good it's good it can be beat but it's it's good it's pretty solid the problem is is with the saints what are we looking at on offense alvin kamara didn't practice yesterday it is doubtful he's going to play thursday which stinks for my fantasy team um so mark ingram is a nice play for fantasy we've seen he can be a nice rb2 in there you can pop me and keep going with mark ingram uh and really overall Outside of that, like Trevor Simeon, like Huss, that dude is throwing for less than six yards of completion. Folks, that's if you take two medium steps forward. 
That's Matt Nichols. Like, that's my you, you don't even have to take a big step like a um, two medium steps and you're throwing it you're walking farther than a trevor simeon pass so what does Taysom hill mean to that by the way that contract like it was that one of the top searches on google yesterday or whatever the, it was signed was is the Taysom hill contract real that was a top google search <laughs> i don't understand w- w- what that is or why he is in such favor i don't get it well, Peyton certainly it. loves them. Uh, Peyton Lee certainly loves them. I'll say this about the Bills, and you're right. I mean, you can get a mulligan for the stinker against the Jags. How they lost to the Jags, I have no idea. But if you're a Bills fan and you watched that game last weekend against the Colts, it has to be incredibly concerning. Yes. Uh, there, there are a few people that I respect that said the Colts win that game if they don't, if they don't even attempt a single pass. They ran the ball down the throat of the Bills at will for the entire day. Jonathan T- Taylor goes for five touchdowns. Oh, and I mean, let's think about the teams that they might be playing when you get to the postseason, potentially in cold weather. I mean, the Bills, you would think, are a team, cold weather spot. They would be built for that. Uh, it sure as hell didn't look like that last week, Andy. And, you know, people have different opinions on the Colts. They've looked great at some times. They've looked horrible at others. But, man, to have a team like that, Indy, come in and just run all over you at will, um, that's a serious, serious concern for the Bills Mafia going into the rest of this season because that needs to get right. And if it doesn't, no chance of advancing in the playoffs. No, not, not at all. And, and the run, that's demoralizing. You talk to ex-players, so what demoralizes you more? Not for someone throwing 400 yards on you. It's running. It's breaking you. If you run like that, you have broken the defense. That's a demoralizing stole taking type of game and the bills defense going in was tops in the league certainly in fantasy football they've given up the fewest fantasy points to running backs wide receivers and quarterbacks all of them but what happened well we can go back and like you said what happened to that jacksonville game you got six points i think what's coming is that the bills have been discovered and defenses are figuring them out as being way too one-dimensional they have no running game Zach Moss, Singletary, Breda, your best running back is your quarterback, which if you're in a Baltimore-style offense, works to a certain degree. But you are way too one-dimensional, especially when the weather gets bad. How is that running game developed? It's not there. The defense is odd because they've been so on fire for most of the year. So that's a strange one. But you're right. They have to get this sort of – and the Saints are a tricky enough team at home where they can run enough – the throwing probably not too much, but you can still dink and dunk your way past. So I want to see how this Bills team responds to that drubbing. Do they come out like they've done before and really show up, show out, and try to make a statement? Or do they come back with a whimper? That's going to tell us a lot about the AFC East coming up. Well, let's talk about the AFC overall. I mean, everyone in the chat knows that you're a, a Browns truther, so we're going to need yeah. to get your thoughts on the uh, on the Browns. Um, before we do, I mean, let's talk about the Chiefs for a second. Um, everyone was down on them, exposed, they're over. Patrick Mahomes has been found out. Um, you know, two weeks ago, he had an incredible game against the Raiders. And last week, in a game that I think everyone thought would be an absolute shootout, the Chiefs defense held Cowboys to nine points right now. Um, yeah. I, what have you thought about the turnaround in Kansas City? And are the Chiefs back up there with the real contenders to win a third straight AFC championship? Or um, is this a you know a little bit of fool's gold considering some of the wins that they've had and the way that they've done it? Well, I think the fool's gold was that three-game stretch where the offense just was in a fog, completely fell apart. There's too much talent. You can't have that much talent and say that anything they do positive offensively is fool's gold. And they were able to chip out two out of the three wins during that stretch. So whatever it was, I couldn't quite put my finger on the why. Was it confident? Lack of, you know, they got uh, figured out for a little bit and maybe the conference was a bit down. Tough to say. But I think one of the factors is we're so used to saying the Chiefs defense, ah, it's a pushover. They're, well, very quietly, they've gotten to that level where if you have a dynamic offense, you just need your defense to be in the middle. If you have a middle-of-the-road defense and you have a high-octane offense, you can go far and win it all. The Chiefs' defense was in the bottom tier. Now it started climbing over the last few games to the middle. They're in that spot. And assuming everybody else can stay healthy, I don't see why this isn't the stretch where they go. Great teams go in little funks all the time. I feel that's all that happened. It was, a, for whatever reason, a fog. Now, if you're a Chiefs fan, you hope they learn from it. 
you hope they figured out why that was happening and don't repeat those mistakes. But really, to me, I never worried that Kansas City wasn't going to be able to figure it out. It seems like they had figured it out. And now they're going to get hot at the perfect time of year, which is end of November and into the playoffs. Uh, Andy McNamara at AndyMC81 on Twitter. He is the fantasy guy for Roger Sportsnet, cranking out uh, all sorts of great content uh, throughout the week. Um, we can't talk about the AFC as much as I would love to ignore the New England Patriots. Uh, we hmm. mentioned them beforehand. Um, are, are they going to win the AFC East? How tough the team. I mean, to me, this is vintage Bill Belichick. This is a team that, you know, they've got a lot of key players back on defense and there's few better. Maybe there is not a single better defensive mind than Belichick. And now everything that they were betting on when they got Mac Jones seems to be coming into fruition. Um, Patriot haters around the world holding their nose right now. Although the majority of Patriots fans abandoned them last year and became Buccaneers fans. Never yeah. forget that. Um, yeah. But regardless of the fans following the team, this team looks like it is going to be a problem. And uh, just your thoughts on this matchup, six and a half point favorites at home to the Tennessee Titans this weekend, Eddie. I'll tell you this. The Patriot fans, quotations, are the fakest maybe in all of sport. <laughs> Unless you're in the Boston area. If you live in the Boston area, then we... Fine. If you're like in Winnipeg or you're where I am east of Toronto, you're like, oh, I'm a diehard Patriots. What are you dieharding from? Too many rings? Too many? T Get out of here. If you can't name me the quarterback before Drew Bledsoe, I'm not interested in your fake fandom. And you definitely jump ship. Yeah, to there's go a few Steve Tom. Grogan jerseys kicking around. We'll give those people a pass. But uh, if you got Grogan, I'm with you. But many of you aren't. And you know who you are. Anyway, we get it just bugs me. I suffered with that with this team with that orange helmet forever, and these guys <laughs> jump ship after a bad year. Uh -uh. Anyway, got me fired up, Huss. Um, so they had one bad year, and now all of a sudden, Bill Belichick has figured it out again. Huss, think of it. Think of this way. I'm not He's saying I, I'm not saying at all that Mac Jones is Tom Brady. That is not what I'm saying. However, look at how the team is built through the first three Super Bowls with Tom Brady, especially the first two. It was they had a quarterback who could do enough not to screw it up, make the high percentage completion throws, hit the deep ball when necessary, and lean on a strong defense. The formula that we are seeing right now in New England, that's what I see. I see the exact same thing. You have a smart rookie quarterback who's doing what is asked of him and hit the deep ball. The defense is coming. You got a nice backfield to compliment him um, and the strong tight ends. Like, it just seems like, it seems hustler that Bill Belichick just rewound the clock, rewound the tape 20 years, and is doing the same thing. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they take the AFC East. Okay, I can't, we can't have you on this program without giving us the Browns update. Uh, oh, where, where's, the, where's the panic meter right now amongst the dog pound? Oh, pretty high, pretty high. Baker uh, is broken. He's broken. Uh, people, too, who like Baker Mayfield stinks. Baker Mayfield has a torn labrum, a bone chip, a busted ankle, a deep bruised knee, and some rib problems. You try doing anything with those type of things. Like, the problem is not healthy Baker Mayfield. Healthy Baker Mayfield works in this offense, especially without Odell Beckham Jr. in it, which he is gone, thankfully. But the problem is, Hus, he is not right. He is broken. He is going to need surgery on that shoulder. If it was me, I would have had him sit versus the Giants. If you don't think as a Browns organization – that Case Keenum, the highest paid backup in football, can't win you a game against Detroit, which he did. I was at that game in Denver, in Cleveland, when they played the Broncos this a uh, few Thursdays ago when Case Keenum came in and did win. That's why you have him. They should have sat Baker, played Keenum, have him ready for this Baltimore matchup. Now, instead, what you have to do is, I think, sit Baker this week, give him the bye, and then go and face Baltimore at home after that. Us, my fear is if they play Baker Mayfield, this week, the way he is, the way he is absolutely broken, uh, the Browns are going to get blown up by 30 points, and I don't really see another way around it. So the panic meter is very high, uh, depending what they do at quarterback. I just don't really see how what I've seen out of Baker Mayfield, he can't plant, he can't move the way he is. The first hit he takes, he's, he's busted up. It's up to the coach. You got Baker's going to want to play forever. Um, as an organization, you got to say, you take a seat, and we're going to do what's best for the team. Now, Kareem Hunt is expected to – he's practicing – That'll help. I don't know how you trot Baker Mayfield out there this Sunday night. It, 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 do we think uh, Hunt's going to play, or is he like a week or two away? I know he's eligible to, but they still yeah. would have to make him active. 
Yes. So that's going to be decided later in the week, probably a Thursday, it's probably, I guess Thursday, tomorrow, uh, maybe even a Friday, Saturday. Um, he, he is eligible. He is trending as well as right tackle Jack Conklin, which is important to remember as well with that running game. He very well could play. Uh, it also wouldn't surprise me if they don't play him, give him the bye, and then come back after. But it would be a huge boost to be able to add Kareem Hunt back into it. We're just going to have to wait probably till the Friday or Saturday to find out for sure. Andy, this has been uh, great to have you back on far too long. We need to, uh, you know, we're getting into the uh, the sweet spot of the NFL schedule and the fantasy schedule as well. So we're going to have to do this again in the next few weeks if uh, if you have time. But quickly before we go, um, plug where people can find you and all the content you're churning out on a daily basis for the National Football League and, of course, fantasy nerds everywhere like me. Absolutely. Well, uh, Huss, anytime you want me, you got me, man. I always love being on with you. Uh, at AndyMC81 on Twitter, at AndyMC Sports on Instagram. And guys, check out UFFSports.com and UltimateSportsNFTs.com. Our NFT platform is up. It's going to be kicking and selling. They look phenomenal. This is one of ones, autograph, next level stuff. So UFFSports.com, UltimateSportsNFTs.com as well. Check those out. Andy, you be well. Enjoy the game. Good luck to the Brownies on the weekend. Yes. All right. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Good stuff. There he is, the one and only Andy McNamara with us here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Uh, We are going to hear from the coach, Paul Maurice. We'll hear a little bit of Pierre-Luc Dubois as well before the end of the program. But I do want to bring in Remus for a minute. Remus, it was funny hearing Andy talk about the NFTs. I just got thinking, maybe we do our first ever Winnipeg Sports Talk NFT, a commemorative NFT of our first ever road shows and the ability to take the show on the road. And it would be an NFT of this throne and this beautiful background that everyone's been gaga over all week. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, that mute button is so hard to hit on this it, microphone it's stand. It's, it's in a weird spot. It's in a weird spot. There's no re- doubt. It's in a really bad spot. Maybe I can flip it around, flip this microphone around. Um, it was funny. You talk about uh, backgrounds um, and your background. Some people are saying in chat, Andy had the best background so far. So much memorabilia. Some people said too much, uh, too much clutter. OCD people, yeah, were like, oh, yeah. there's way too much stuff back there. Yeah, I, I think it looked pretty good. But I think we'll have to take a picture of you on that throne and put it on our, our Instagram. So Yeah, the first the first yeah. ever WST NFT. That'll be... Uh, That'll be our holiday fundraising effort. We'll do uh, we'll do one of this background. We'll do one of you and your jerseys and one of me in the sports bar. Just a limited edition. Only three WST NFTs yeah. for the year of 2021. Someone left a comment in our YouTube, uh, you know, yesterday's show. And if you are watching on the replay, leave a comment in the bottom, you know, what you think about uh, tonight's Jets game or the lines or whatever you want. That's, that's a big help as well. But they were saying... Well, I miss Hustler in the bar. I'm like, hey guys, he's gonna be in the bar. And he'll be back in the bar next week. Uh, you're hey, on the road. I, I might in be in a bar later on this weekend. Once I'm done this program, I am. I have been at a certain bar for a couple days here. I'm doing some investigation as to whether it is possible. Now that we've actually pulled this off and understand how it all works, if it is possible to actually take it out of the hotel on the road again later on this week. I don't want to promise anything, but we we, We we're going down that road to see if it's possibility. I know the CTO will say we have to have wired internet. I've told them that we Mm. need to be able to plug everything and set it up. I think there is the potential maybe for our Friday show. We might be able to do it regardless. um, It's been great. It's been great to be here. I told you I'm on it. I know I I've already exceeded your expectations with the ability to set this thing up without you having to do two a two hour FaceTime call to make to make it all work. So um so who knows? I don't want to bite it off more than I can chew, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this. So uh, we'll see whether it's even possible. Of course, we're live tomorrow at one o'clock and then on Friday, early, eleven AM and all you marble racers, make sure you join us in the lunch hour we'll do that and we normally do in the second half of the program usually the last half hour we'll fire up the marbles but we're going to get done by one o'clock so people can kind of consume it and of course get ready for the winnipeg jet game when the jets drop the puck at 2 30 in the afternoon on friday and then of course big game on saturday against the flames and we'll focus in on that flames game 
with my guy Pat Steinberg, who's going to join me. First time on Winnipeg Sports Talk after doing so many shows with him in Calgary. Really looking forward to having Pat, maybe the hardest working guy in the biz, join us on Friday's show. All right, we will get the lines for Cool Bet. We're keeping an eye on what's happening at the uh, Olympic trials right now as well as we do the program. But, of course, everyone looking forward to this game tonight. Let's hear a little bit of what Coach Paul Maurice had to say following the morning skate as his team begins a three-game homestand or three-game road trip, excuse me, tonight against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Here's Coach. Paul Stasi just close but not quite ready yet? We, we need to get him some hard workouts in. Uh, today will be his first heavy push, and then we see how he comes back in tomorrow. So if he comes off today... Uh, strong. We will skate it as a team tomorrow because of the afternoon start. So we'll get him in there and uh, then he's possible for Minnesota. What have you seen from Columbus itself so in the success a little bit early? Didn't change over, but what have you seen? Yeah, I mean, really, really strong off the rush team and dynamic. And I think when Max Domi came back in and, and it kind of got Roslovic going, they've got something on each line, and each line's a little bit different. Um, plays, I wouldn't say style in terms of not playing a system, but they're, they're different looking lines, so they're dynamic with that, really strong off that rush. Um, got lots of confidence to make plays, right? They're, they're, they're um, playing like a team. I think they scored 19 in their last four, so they scored some goals. They look like that. And then... You know we've got to we've got to be able to handle that. So I think it fits with the games that we've played. I think uh, with Crosby and Carter, but but especially through the two Edmonton games, we've played teams that can really damage you off the rush. And I think we've handled that pretty well. But that'll be our test tonight. Well, we know a lot of the focus will be on Pierre Luc tonight, given the circumstances. Do you pull him aside, or do you let him just kind of run loose? I would watch it. I would watch it, and if I felt I needed to. Uh, I would, but based on his game, he's been very consistent with it. I'm, I'm not going to grab him tonight. Just let him go play. I, I, if I thought if I thought a guy was feeling it or was nervous, uh, I would say something to him, but relaxing and. Uh, but I won't say anything to him. Given what you've learned about him, do you think he's going to be able to soak it all in and kind of almost enjoy the environment? Um. I don't, I don't know the answer. I don't know that it's it's a long enough stint. Certainly, it's an, an important stint, as, as Patty's was with us, but it's not... You know, I, I remember you going back into Pittsburgh and Ron Francis's first return there. That that was a career, right? Two Stanley Cups and, and a lifetime with one team. Um, I don't think I said anything to him either, but I just would check in just to learn you know, how you're feeling about this. and. Uh, but I don't think that either young player was with the team so long that they were so rooted in the community that it's a shocker for them. Paul, you ran 11-7 uh, there for a stretch, some yep. of it by necessity. Is that something you look at doing again, just to, to yeah. get Nathan back in a game? Or? Yeah, I, I'm more, I, I thought that the back half of this month, the end of January and the third week in April were our three most difficult stretches in terms of eight games. And and I in in eight different time zones the back to back I'm I'm just and I, and I may even do it in Minnesota but I'm, I'm I want the fourth line there now I haven't used them a whole heck of a lot in the last couple of games but I and and that becomes almost then even more important if you haven't used them a lot and you're going into three and four I want that safety on the bench it would also if Paul comes back into the lineup then I think that there gives me more room. There's another forward I can drop down for minutes if I need to. And, they, and it could be even a situation where Paul would come in on the fourth, and then you would maybe even look at it harder because you could drop a skilled guy down. But right now, I think I'll just hold with it. Just, uh... All right, there's, uh, there's Coach Paul Maurice. And I love how we have a chat full of uh, PhD master's students in psychiatry and psychology who evaluate Maurice's body language each and every time we play him on the program here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Um, good stuff. Of course, game 6 o'clock tonight. We wanted to get a little bit of the coach. Interesting Mike's question on 11 and 7 in Beaulieu, but you know, still really wanting to get back to that, you know, play in the fourth line. And the fourth line got a heck of a lot more ice time in the Pittsburgh game as opposed to what they normally do, and I think it was deserved. And, of course, they were the one line that actually was able to beat Tristan Jerry on Monday night. 
But the guy that everyone's going to be focusing on tonight is wearing number 80 for the Winnipeg Jets. Pierre-Luc Dubois' return to Columbus. Um, and no surprise, there was plenty of questions for Pierre-Luc on uh, returning back to the only other place he's played as an NHLer. So uh, let's hear a little bit of the Winnipeg Jets' center from earlier today as well. I think you've been back in this building since almost a year now. What's it like to be back? What do you expect the crowd to be like tonight? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, at first, it, it definitely feels weird to, to be back, um, you know, come in with the bus and then walk in, in front of the room, you know, your first instinct is to go through the door and then you keep walking. I haven't been in this room since development camp, my my second year. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's good to be back. Um, it was good to see, saw some of the guys, uh, you know, saw them skate a bit before I practice, talked to a few of them. Um, I mean, I said this before, I have... I have great memories of being here, so it's definitely special being back. And what do you think the reception is going to be in the house tonight? Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I, I mean, it's been almost a year now, but I'm expecting some people still to maybe be unhappy, disappointed. Um, but you know, I've it fits if they're happy. You know, it's great if they're not happy at booing me. You know, I've I've heard it before. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I have great memories of being here. Yeah. Do you have any, any regrets with the way it happened? Yeah. Is there things that you went back and could do that we could do? Oh, no, I don't like living with regrets. Um, I think everything happens for a reason. I think you know, my time here was great. Uh, you know, at the end it got, got a little complicated, it got choppy at the end. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. and. It happened for a reason. Uh, I learned a lot from from last year, everything that happened, and I think it, it's helped me for this year, come back stronger mentally and physically. Uh, but yeah, I think everything happens for a reason. Can you say how difficult that was to go through from your perspective? Yeah, it was very hard. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't make up excuses for myself, but it, it was it was very hard. Um, the whole year, physically and mentally, you know, having to. Having to quarantine in the middle of the season, practicing, coming back, getting injured. Uh, you know, injury had hurt pretty much the entire year, and getting injured right before playoffs. Um, it was it was tough, but you learn. And I'm happy it happened. You know, last year instead of happening maybe I'm 28, 29. Um, you know, now it's happening now when I'm young and and I'm still learning a lot. Uh, you know, maybe one day I'll be able to help a guy my age now go through the same thing. So. It's uh, it was a learning process. Sometimes it's hard to you know when you're in the moment. Sometimes it's hard to look at it and say you know you're, you're going to learn from this and get better because of it. You know when it's happening right now. But a year later, when I look back at it, um, you know it's it's something that just made me stronger now. All right, there's Pierre Luc Dubois. No doubt, you know many questions about returning to Columbus, uh, but you know you can just tell the confidence that he has right now with the way that he's playing, and uh, certainly a very different story than what we saw last year in Winnipeg, and that's been a great thing for the Winnipeg Jets, as um, you know he's been the dominant center so far this season. Certainly looking for more from Mark Scheifele, uh, but Pierre Luc Dubois has been as advertised. And this is the guy that the Jets thought they were trading for when they gave up Patrick Lining and Jack Rosovic last season. All right. Uh, do you want to get to the cool bet lines here? Um, of course, all week long, I'm out here in Saskatoon. We're doing special content for cool bet on the draws. Uh, I've got that up on my social media, follow cool bet Canada. You can find it there as well. Um, obviously the women on the, on the ice this afternoon and a big men's draw coming up this evening from Saskatoon, those games on TSN. But as far as the cool bet lines go, I mean, the Jets, a minus 125 favorite to win this game tonight. Columbus, home dog, plus 107. But I promised you we'd get to some of these props, and we go to player goals, and we're all wondering, what is Dubois to score a goal tonight? Well, Pierre-Luc Dubois is plus 235 to score. And uh, if you think he might get two, you can get plus 1150, so just about 12 to 1 on your money at Cool Bet. Uh, there's a number of other ones just for some of the Jets for you to score tonight. Kyle Connor plus 145, Ehlers plus 185, Shifley plus 220, and as we mentioned, Pierre Luc Dubois at plus 235, Cop plus 270, and Blake Wheeler at 3 to 1. As far as player points, to get a point, Pierre Luc Dubois is minus 130, to get 
two points in tonight's game. Pierre-Luc Dubois is plus 350. I have a feeling. I don't like to bet the Jets. I, I seem like I mush them. I've rarely bet them, and then when I do, they lose. So I promise to you, Jet fans, I will not bet on the Jets tonight. However, uh, there might be a little sprinkle on Pierre-Luc Dubois with a big game in his homecoming. Of course, massive slate of games tonight. We went through it earlier on the Boston Pizza scoreboard, but go to coolbet.com. You can bet on the curling, and of course, you can bet on the hockey tonight, NFL football tomorrow. And if you haven't played there before, use the promo code WST and you'll get a 100% bonus on your first deposit up to $200. So good luck if, if you've had it. It's been an up and down week for me personally. be nice to get on a bit of a heater head into the NFL Thursday tomorrow. All right, Remus, we've got a few things to get to. Um, do you want to mention uh, Winnipeg Ice back number one in the CHL rankings? I believe it's been about a month that they've been on top of the league. And well, no kidding. They're 19 and one. They look to go to 20 and one tonight at home against the Swift Current Broncos. Looking forward to having Munzee on the program on Friday to get the latest on the ice. But I'll tell you what, I mean, if you have not seen this hockey team play so far, you are missing out right now. A very special squad. And interestingly, they're dominating the Western Hockey League. And Reem, today in the CHL top 10 rankings, the top four teams all from the Western Hockey League and the Winnipeg guys have been the cream of the crop throughout the season. Yeah, the Winnipeg Ice are having a, a ridiculous season. And yes, we've had a lot of people asking, when are we doing an ice update Friday with Brian Munz? Uh, he'll join the show um, ahead of their weekend's games. And I mean, their goal differential is <laughs> silly. Um, I was looking at it yesterday. I can bring it up in a second. Here's the uh, here's the power rankings on the screen. Ryan but, Friesen, by the yeah. way, 20 and one, getting close to Undertaker status. That was a good run, Ryan. I know I called you a bozo last week with a bad take. That one yeah. made me laugh. Okay, here we go, Remus. Yeah, so there, there you go, number one. And we're seeing jokes. Oh, ESPN has the ice ranked 20th, says Rob Mahoney, which is a callback to last week's ESPN NHL rankings, which had the Jets pretty low. Yeah. But uh, let me bring up their, their well goal. Well done, Rob, man. We got some heaters in the chat yeah. to finish off the program. This is great. Yeah, but they're, I mean, their stats um, this year for W, like their goal differential, insane. So I'll have to get out to, uh, to a nice game. I've been saying that all year. It will happen. I will find time. I'm a busy guy doing this, managing all this stuff, but we'll figure, we will figure it out. You don't think I'm busy? Break. <laughs> you don't think I'm sitting here Googling uh, what equipment so you can go out on the road the last couple yes. of weeks? Yes, <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, that is true, that is true. There's been a lot of extra CTO work to make all this happen. It's gone well. But you know what? We're just, we need to make it a priority to get out to a game. We yes, will do we that will. very soon. But if we, you we haven't already, get out to see the ice home game tonight at the Ice Cave over at the Wayne Fleming Arena at Max Bell. And speaking of arenas, the Moose today, Remo, with a bit of a different look for their practice today. Um, I tweeted this out earlier, and I think Dan Fink sent some, uh, some uh, picks over. The Moose taking it outdoors today and practicing at Camp Manitou really neat venue for uh, for it kind of a covered outdoor rink out at camp manitou and uh, that's where the moose went through the uh, the routine today this was super cool um yeah i've i've seen like arenas like this here i'll bring it up i've seen arenas like this in the u.s like outdoor rink but with a covered roof and i, I don't think that we really have one of these in winnipeg and I know the Moose and True North, there you have the Dale Howardchuck Pond Hockey Classic. I'm assuming it'll take place on something like this. But here's the pictures the Moose uh, put out. They're wearing the balaclavas. Um, you can see the frost, but you, nice view, covered roof. So this is super cool. I want to see something uh, like this. And every year, Huss, I say, I need to go out and play some more uh, outdoor Outdoor hockey. I do have a rink near my house. That I'll oh, you're to too get busy, to. though. You're too busy. I'm w way too busy. Way way too busy. Also, uh, yeah, I just don't don't have the time. So I, I'd I'll, like to do it. We'll we'll see. I'll say this about <laughs> Camp Manitou. Um, you know, they do amazing things in the community, and I know the True North Youth Foundation has been a big supporter of Camp Manitou. Um, and you know, a number of the young kids that, you know, kind of get introduced to hockey through the Winnipeg Jets, um, you know, youth, youth hockey program and, you know, introducing uh, the sport to kids from, you know, maybe some more challenged backgrounds and whatnot. have done a lot of stuff out at Camp Manitou. So it was really cool to see that. And we've done a couple shows out there. 
And I think this may have been back before Gary went to Vegas, if I remember correctly. But, um, you know, we went out there and did some shows and maybe some fundraising days that, you know, the station was helping out with. But I don't remember seeing that facility, so I'm not sure whether that's new or I just didn't notice it when we were there. But nevertheless, really neat spot for some outdoor hockey with the covered. So uh, Moose back at home this weekend. Check out moosehockey.com for all the latest on the Moose. And, uh, you know, we were talking a lot about David Gustafson. Nicole Perfetti is looking great. Billy Hainel is excelling right now. Very exciting times for uh, the prospect pool of the Winnipeg Jets. And wouldn't it all be surprised to see some of these young men at some point, depending on what happens with the big club, get a look this season. I'd love to see David Gustafson, frankly, as soon as possible when you think about what he might be able to bring, certainly to that bottom six and the Winnipeg Jets fourth line. Um, this has been a great show today. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Dreamo, we do have to mention one thing uh, before that, you know, when we went from Patty Newfeld who we should be calling Patty the Batty. Uh, Patty the Batty may be the best nickname in all of sports with the uh, the UFC character, but Winnipeg needs our own Patty the Batty, and I don't think there's a better guy to be that guy than Patty Newfeld. But the revelation about Chef Jeff Gray and his preparations for the O-Lines viewing party for the West semifinal might have been the most noteworthy thing we covered on the entire program today. Yeah, I was typing in chat. You know, if you need to, uh, you know, we need, where's our invite? We need to get out to this thing, Huss, and uh, cover it for Winnipeg Sports Talk. I know T. Will changed his name in chat to like brisket correspondent. Um, <laughs> corn dogs, sliders, brisket. This sounds like an amazing, uh, an amazing meal that Jeff Gray is putting together for the Bombers O line when they get together and watch the West semifinal. What a party. Uh, that if the must Bombers be. win the Grey Cup, I would like to. Uh, have Winnipeg Sports Talk do a special show where we cater Chef Jeff to uh, make food throughout the program or maybe make his best meals or whatever. The, I mean, I'd yes. like to basically have the line, like the, the, the menu that they were talking about. I love corn dogs. The slider sounded amazing. I mean, if you're going to add a brisket in, I mean, that checks off all the boxes, but we'll get Chef Jeff in, hopefully after a Grey Cup win later on December to show off his culinary expertise, um, knowing that he can play football along with the rest of the Bombers. But I did not know he had that club in the bag. But you could see the glow in Patty's eye when he was talking about the menu for the party on the thurs on Sunday. And uh, let's face it, nobody eats like old linemen. So I will take their word for great food, maybe over anybody else in the city. You want to know about food, talk to the big guys on the old line They know it better than anybody else. Yes, uh, I, I agree. And Patty Newfeld, always a great conversation. We appreciate him coming on and uh, sharing those details with us. So uh, I think everyone was getting a bit uh, a bit hungry during that part of the conversation. <laughs> no doubt about it. Well, listen, folks, been a great show today. Thanks again to Patty Newfeld for joining us. Obviously, Andy McNamara, one of my favorites uh, to come on the show, and Mike McIntyre, who took some time from Columbus to discuss uh, all the storylines around this game tonight. Uh, of course, 6 o'clock start this evening. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Ken Weeb's going to join us from the road. We'll recap tonight's game and look ahead to the Minnesota Wild matinee Friday afternoon. And do not forget, because of that day game on Friday, we're going to do the show early, 11 a.m. on Friday. Marble race around 1240 or 1245. So govern yourselves accordingly. And we won't spend a lot of time on the wild game that week because we want the show to have a little bit more life. We'll be focusing in on the Flames game Saturday night with Pat Steinberg, as well as all the playoff action coming up in the Canadian Football League and a big weekend in the NFL. And speaking of the CFL, tomorrow, in addition to Ken Weeb, Derek Taylor will join us from Regina for a preview of the Riders and Stamps in the West Semi with the winner coming on down to Winnipeg on December 5th to play in the West Final. Um, thanks again to uh, everyone for joining us today. And, of course, all of our sponsors, Royal Sports. I saw the Royal guys in the chat. Great to see you, Greg. Head on down there if you're chomping at the bit to get one of those new Olympic jerseys. They'll have them there. And don't forget to check out that Canada soccer section. We need more Canada soccer gear out in the streets of Winnipeg with what our men's team is doing right now. And, of course, the incredible accomplishments of our women. Uh, Vita Health Fresh Market, Culligan Water, Manitoba Battery, Not Auto Corp. Little Brown Jug. I might try and find some Little Brown Jug in Regina tonight. I do know that it is available in Saskatchewan, 
uh, and it would uh, certainly be an upgrade from some of the Saskatchewan beer that we've been having this week. Uh, Princess Auto, great sponsors of ours. More Princess Auto curling reports throughout the week here in Saskatoon at the Olympic Trials. Boston Pizza, the Nick and Nicky DQ Group, the Great Taste of Canadian Club, and of course, our betting partners over at Cool Bet Canada. Coolbet.com, tons of hockey tonight. We'll have the curling draws up as well. And of course, three games in the NFL tomorrow. Uh, check your DraftKings invites or check the league. I do believe Mitch was just mentioning there's a few spots for the hockey tonight. And we do have a few spots. We want to get up to 30 for the NFL contest tomorrow. Go to league, search Winnipeg Sports Talk, get in on that. And we will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Live from Saskatoon with Remo back at WSTHQ in Winnipeg. Here live on YouTube and, of course, on the podcast. Folks, thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the game tonight. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, 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 shut it down. Oh, oh, Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.